If you're over 40 and noticing that you're gaining more belly fat than normal, you're not going to lose it unless you do this. You guys want to guess mm. what we're talking about here? Yeah. You know, uh, when it comes to fat gain, fat loss, we'll just open with this. Um, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a basic truth, right? To lose weight or gain weight, that you have to have either a calorie deficit or a calorie surplus. So that's number one. Like if, mm. if you're taking in less calories than you're burning, then your body will lose weight, hopefully coming from body fat. And if you're taking more calories than you're burning, then you'll gain weight. Um, and in that <clears> case, <throat> hopefully it's muscle. But nonetheless, the energy imbalance uh, is where we start. Now, what I'm referring to is what a lot of people will notice, uh, especially right around the age of 40 or 45, sometimes as, as, as young as maybe late 30s, where they're gaining weight, but they're gaining it differently than they did before. They're gaining more of it yeah. around their belly um, than they did before. This is, especially for women, you'll hear this from women, where they'll be like, you know, when I used to gain body fat, I would gain it around my hips and thigh area. Now I'm getting all this weird body fat around my belly. Like, what, what's going on? It's like their whole body chemistry kind of changed. That's you, Hormones. That's it. Hormones. Yeah. Your hormones um, play a role in fat gain, fat loss, muscle gain, muscle loss, but they also can play a role in fat distribution on the body. And what we tend to find with belly fat are hormone imbalances. Um, high cortisol levels contribute to visceral body fat in the belly, especially um, women, uh, but also true of men. Um, and you also see more insulin resistance. So when somebody starts to gain body fat, you, you tend to see some insulin resistance anyway, but you see more of it when more of that body fat is going to the belly. So the question is, which one is, comes first? Is it the belly fat that contributes to the insulin resistance or is it the other way around? Well, uh, if, you're, if you're gaining more body fat in your belly than you ever have before, if all of a sudden you're storing it in strange ways, it's the resistance uh, that happened first. That's what we tend to find. Now, mm. it doesn't uh, even like uh, how or where, if, like say for since we're talking about men, uh, where where a man stores it could even give us insight on what hormones. Like for example, if like yeah. a, a male that's estrogen right. dominant yes. yeah. tends to have like a or pear shape. Effect, you are, you right? start to see a man, a man breast who, tissue. Yeah, like, you'll see more body fat in the chest area, in the uh, the upper arm area. Yeah. Um, uh, hips and thighs. So that tends to be a hormone imbalance. And of course with women, it's like they're starting to store it um, uh, like a, like a man would, uh, around their belly. Um, and, and now there's, there's the way you know, this is if you go and you go get your hormones tested by a specialist, by somebody who works with hormones from a longevity perspective and they'll let you know, they'll see, okay, thyroid is because typically after 40, you start to see issues. If you see issues with thyroid, um, you'll start to see issues with insulin sensitivity, especially if you don't strength train. Um, estrogen or progesterone imbalances uh, start to become an issue. Estrogen dominance uh, is one of the things that they'll label it. And, um, you know, there are ways to change those those hormone imbalances naturally, namely strength train, good sleep, stress uh, management, um, you know, a good diet high in protein. That's not, uh, that's mostly uh, whole natural foods. But then also hormone replacement therapy becomes um, a really viable option. This was like a, this was like a taboo thing maybe 10 years ago. Like hormone replacement therapy wasn't really, it was almost like cheating, right? Yeah. Um, it but, still can be a little taboo with people. It can. I, I'm being reminded of this as I've been documenting everything that I'm going through right now. And, uh, you know, me, I've always been very transparent about the testosterone replacement therapy and everything that I've been taking. And it's like the amount of people that, oh, does, then it doesn't count. It's just like, well, okay, well, I'm not, you're not going to, well, you should do it without it. It's like, yeah, no, I'm, I've already accepted that. I, I went through the path of trying to do it naturally. And then, and then let me tell you, for somebody who is struggling and they're, you know, north of 40 years old and they're, they haven't got their hormones checked. They haven't, like it is night and day difference on how your body responds to the things that you're doing. Like nothing was more frustrating than that feeling I went through when I was trying to naturally bring up my hormones after years of steroid abuse and then trying to go, okay, I'm going to try and see if I can bring this up through all the holistic ways, right? Everything, even using things like red light therapy, using all the supplementation, d diet, sleep, strength training, everything that I was supposed to do to not even really move the needle and how, uh, how perfect the diet was all the, and like barely seeing mm -hmm. any sort of change in my body to, 
getting my place to optimum levels, not even beyond superficial crazy numbers, like just optimal levels for me through synthetic testosterone and like nothing else changed other than that. And all mm. of a sudden body fat comes yep. off, muscle starts building, like sleep gets better, energy goes, it's yeah. like, it's a oh, night. I remember this. Oh yeah, my God, working. it is a night and day difference on how your body responds to all the things that you are doing. It is interesting, like even just hanging out with some of my friends I haven't hung out with in a long time. And you're just reminded about like the general public, like and what kind of information people are still receiving. Like, you know, even like exogenous testosterone is, uh, there's stuff that, that they're bringing up that like they thought it was super inflammatory and it was causing all these problems if I was to introduce that in. And I'm like, it could be further from uh, the truth. And it's like, depending on obviously where you're at with, you know, getting tested and in the levels, but like, you know, going through therapy to bring you back to some semblance of balance. Like, I mean, it's, that is such a, a reasonable approach. Yeah, Context matters. So when you speak with the, uh, the experts on the cutting edge of uh, hormone replacement therapy, what they'll say to you is if you're, if you have a healthy lifestyle, if you exercise regularly, you eat right, then you go on hormone replacement therapy um, or you do them at the same time, right? Then you see profound improvements profound in your, in your quality of life. Now, if you're like, I'll use testosterone for example. If you're a guy, you're 50 pounds overweight, uh, you don't eat healthy, you don't exercise, you get your testosterone levels checked, it's low. So then you go and you ramp up your testosterone with replacement therapy, but you don't exercise still, you still eat like garbage. You, you might not be helping yourself. Right. In, in, in some cases yeah. you may be hurting yourself because you've got this loud testosterone signal in an unhealthy context. Now, uh, so that's that's the important thing to consider sure. is the hormone replacement therapy that we're referring to with this in incredible, you know, improvement quality of life is in combination with a healthy lifestyle. Better an habits. Yeah, an unhealthy lifestyle, like if you take estrogen, you're a woman and you go on estrogen, but you have a very unhealthy lifestyle, it might not be good for you. In fact, it might be bad for you to raise your estrogen. But if you're strength training, you're eating healthy and you you get tested and you're like, okay, my hormones are, are low. I have the hormones of a 90 year old and, and I shouldn't, I'm only 43 or whatever. Uh, and then you go on replacement therapy, you go on this, it's, it improves the quality of your life and your health dramatically. Definitely quality of life. Definitely. Oh, like yeah. I, I, myself as an example, I, I, I can give you the numbers on the difference, the difference between me on replacement therapy and not, and I, I did everything. I was so very consistent with my workouts. I never stopped. You guys know this very consistent with my diet. The difference was 12 pounds of lean body mass and eight pounds of body fat. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the difference that it, it caused for me. By the way, replacement therapy doesn't put you in the levels that you're going to see athletes or bodybuilders abuse. No, it's right. very, very yeah, different. It's a very different. Animal. They're taking thousands of percentage, you know, percentages higher than what replacement is. But if you're noticing these, these things on yourself and you're also somebody that really is like working out and trying to care for yourself, well, first off, if you're exercising right and eating right, the odds that you'll need replacement therapy are lower. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. But if, you, but if you're one of those people um, and you go on replacement therapy and you're, you're following and you're doing the right stuff, you're just going to have an improvement in the quality of your life. That's just mm -hmm. what's going to happen. And, and again, talking to the experts, Dr. Tina, Dr. Lauren Fitz, Dr. Seeds, um, you know, these are the people that we, Dr. Rand, um, they're like, oh yeah, when, when I work with people, especially over the age of 40, um, it's, it's almost mandatory. Yeah, yeah, we 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 do some some kind of hormone replacement therapy, whether it's low dose thyroid, or some progesterone, or testosterone, or all of the above. Um, and then you, you see these profound uh, improvements and all the things you listed. You know, libido, energy, sleep, of course, fat loss, muscle gain, mm -hmm, drives. Drive. Yeah, insulin sensitivity improves from the from the muscle gain. Um, recovery improves even lifting things like mild depression and stuff i mean i remember f feeling that when i was going when i was when my testosterone was so low like just unmotivated mm -hmm. that like almost like this cloud is kind of over you and to just by getting it there getting it to the you know normal levels just all that cleared like instantly like it, within a week all of a sudden all that stuff starts to go away and all of a sudden, all that work that you were putting into your diet and training, you start seeing those incremental changes where it just felt like, man, everything I, I was doing wasn't moving the needle at all. And, you know, I, I'm so glad we're at where we're at now with like hormone therapy. There's companies like Transcend that like we work with now that anybody can have access to anywhere in the country. Like it's so cool 
that we're, we've moved that way that people now, because I can't tell you how many clients I trained were probably a good percentage of why we struggled with results was because their hormones were just yeah. off. And I yeah. didn't know, I wasn't educated enough as a trainer to know enough mm -hmm. to push them in that direction. Where now, anybody I ever help, especially if they're above 30 and 40, and I'm talking to them, like the first thing I do, especially if they've told me things like this, like how many times do you guys probably get family or friends who are like, you know, Adam, I eat really good. I'm doing this. I'm doing, they're telling you they're doing all the things and they're like, but I'm not. And all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. not seeing any change or I, I'm carrying body fat this way. And I'm like, well, have you gotten your hormones checked? Like go do that first. Like go get your blood work and check all that out because we can have the perfect diet, perfect training. And if that is out of balance, you're going to see minimal to no results from all of this hard work you're putting into having a healthier lifestyle by simply optimizing that. Now, all of a sudden, all the things that you're doing, mm -hmm. you start to see the results. Now, to from. be very clear, if you're leading an unhealthy lifestyle, becoming healthier with your lifestyle often does have a positive, uh, I mean, most of the time has a positive impact on your hormones. But if you're one of those people that's doing those things and you have for a while, this is like, the, this is a scenario where it's like, for sure, get tested. You've been doing these things for a long time. You've been consistent for a long time. And suddenly it feels like what is happening to my body. You hear this, especially with women. I used to hear this with female, female yeah. clients, especially where, you know, they, they, they'd work with me and they'd be like, I don't know what happens. Like almost like overnight, I started getting belly fat. I never gained belly fat before. It's never where I stored before all of a sudden. And I didn't change anything. Um, then you would check your hormones and, and you want to go, you know, you mentioned our partners, um, you know, mphormones.com is where you would go to, to talk with one, with one of their doctors. You want to work with specialists that understand, um, you know, longevity and hormone replacement therapy, because it's a very different approach than if you go to your, your, your general practitioner, general practitioner is going to look at the ranges, yeah. you know, here's the lab ranges. As long as you're within range, you're fine, but that's, that completely discounts the individual variance and in how people feel and how one level of hormones would be okay with one person, but not might not be okay for someone else. Like give an example, I'll use a simple one to talk about is testosterone. You have testosterone and there's a range that you want to, that, that they consider normal. It's just something like 300 it's, to bro, it's 400 all the way to 1100. No, it's I think it's some, some of them show 300 to a thousand or somewhere around that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's That's total range. testosterone. And then there's a free testosterone, which you also, you definitely want to look at, but we'll just, speak about the total. You could be in that in that range and be 300 or you could be as high as 1000. So first off there's that, but number 2, there are differences in androgen receptor density between individuals. Okay, what mm -hmm. does that mean? That means if Adam and I have the identical amount of testosterone in our body, but he has double the androgen receptor density, it's as if he has twice as much testosterone because right. that's what I can the, use it. That's what the testosterone attaches to. Yeah. And we don't really have a reliable way to test androgen receptor density. You have to go to a, a special lab and it's a real expensive test. Your doctor's not going to test that. So unless they're going off of the labs and symptoms, then you're, they're not doing a good job because you could be within range and be like, oh, I still have like these low testosterone symptoms. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Well, use, let's use Doug as an example. Okay. Doug, Doug hovers around the 900 to yeah. 1100 range, right? naturally never taken anything before in his life imagine thank god he's done all his blood work and he knows this imagine let's fast forward say five six years down the road and doug is he's like at 500 and yeah he's at 500 which is which is fine on the on which the, is on good the which yeah. is good for a lot of people and the, and a general practitioner would be like oh you're great especially for your age you're but he's got all the symptoms but doug's like man i just feel sluggish yep. and i'm like my body's not and i'm storing this way and you i don't know, feel that and it's like and a GP would literally look at that and be like, oh, you're not only good. You're, I mean, you're not only okay. You're good for your age and totally dismiss all these feelings that he's having. This is also why <clears throat> I think that the younger you can, as soon as you can, at least go get your, even if you're somebody who's healthy, like you're a 28 year old and you, you don't need anything. What you should do is go get your blood panels so you know your yeah. levels. Yes. And you know mm -hmm. what's interesting, by the way, about this conversation? It's, it is interesting that it's taboo because- uh, millions and millions and millions of women are on birth control. That's hormones. Yep. And you're on it since you're oftentimes a teenager. So that's number one. Number two, millions and millions of people are on enzyolytics and antidepressants. Do you know how many times people are taking the antidepressant because of the, of the symptoms they're getting from hormone imbalances? Oh, uh, yep. So you could be a woman in your 40s, all of a sudden you're just developing all this anxiety and they're like, here's your antidepressant when the solution would have been progesterone. 
Mm-hmm. It would have been just taking some progesterone yeah. at night or before thyroid. you go to bed. Yeah, that or it could be thyroid. Experience, yeah. it, was I'm it? a general practitioner. Yeah, I just wanted to put her on uh, anti-anxiety uh, meds and, and stuff like that, just so that they feel something different. Yes. I mean, that was really the answer. It's terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, sorry to interrupt you. Look, uh, on November 13th, we're going to record live me, Adam, and Justin creating a brand new MAPS program. You'll see it live, how we do the process and get some insight onto the new program go check it out it's november 13th at 6 p.m pacific on instagram at mind pump media so and i mean and, and they don't look necessarily to you know symptoms based off of hormone imbalances unless they're one of these these specialists because if you're a man and you're you know your testosterone's within range is 350 which is on the low end but let's say that's what it is and you're like anxious mm-hmm. you lost motivation sleep is off oh what's going on you go to your gp they're like well you're within range Let's look at these other class of, of drugs and medications we can give you, which, I mean, it could be solved with testosterone, potentially. It could be solved, and this is a hormone that you already produce. It's not needing to take something else. My point isn't that one is better than the other. It's just that sometimes we medicate for hormone issues when all you have to do is solve the hormone you know, problems. Yeah, yep, you know? yep. Anyway, speaking of all this, Adam, uh, your... I would like to guess, because you're going to go get a body fat test. In two hours. In two hours. Ooh, two hours. We're yeah. heading, heading you are how many weeks into this transformation? So Doug actually just checked. We are literally actually one month exactly. I, so for, four weeks? For some reason, I thought I was on the fifth right week. Right on the but, money, huh? But it's exactly okay. four weeks, I guess, right What now. was your body weight total in that? One, 199.5. Okay. okay. 199.5, 15% body fat? 15.8, that- almost 16%. Almost okay. 16% body fat. Four weeks later, what's your body weight right now? Uh, 209. You're 209, so you, you're up- 10 pounds. Yeah, roughly, uh, yeah, roughly 10 pounds. Mm-hmm. Um, and Which right away, right away, you have to know, okay, I was coming from two meals a day, 2,000 calories roughly, not really drinking a lot of water because I wasn't really training, and so uh, not taking creatine. So things that are in the mix, creatine's in the mix- I am drinking close close to probably a gallon uh, of water a day right now. Just strength training. And mm-hmm. I'm eating 3,000 plus calories. Okay, so. and for people who aren't familiar, you used to be a professional physique competitor, you used to walk around with 50 more pounds of lean body mass yeah. than you got tested four weeks ago. Yeah, I had- So I, we're working with muscle memory. Muscle memory is there. And muscle memory is crazy. For people who don't realize- you build a bunch of muscle, you lose all that muscle. Gaining it back happens in a hurry if you do the right I'm thing. I'm really, I'm actually really, because all the things that, and I know we all have lots of experience with diet and training and building muscle and losing body fat. We've been doing this for oh, over two. But I've never come from this place before. So I've never, uh, I've never been trying to build muscle when I have had lost this much. I've had maybe like somewhat, like where yeah. I've like, oh, I'm like, I have 10, 15 pounds of lean body mass. Yeah. I, I've lost 50 more. down. Yeah. 50 to be, to be 50 pounds and not yeah. that long ago. It wasn't, right. but you no, know. and you're working with, you're working with, uh, muscle memory, not just from physique days, but from even prior to that. Yes. Cause that's probably some of the lowest lean body mass you had in, in, a long a lot, time. Yeah, I can't remember. I wish I maybe. When I could was find... the last time you were one ninety nine and almost sixteen percent body fat? Oh, a long time. Even when I uh, was, I haven't seen one hundred ninety nine pounds in. Yeah. Holy shit! Uh, what were you in when you were at the uh, marijuana clubs? So I was, but you were heavy there. Two twelve. I was two twelve yeah. and hot, nineteen percent body fat. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Wait, so, wait, wait. Let's do the math. I wonder yeah, if you had more lean body mass back then. We'll do the math right there. So I know exactly so what I was. I was two hundred and twelve pounds. So two twelve, and what? I was nineteen point eight percent body fat. Okay, so uh, okay, so minus two twelve. You had more lean body mass back then. No way. Yeah, you did. Wow. Wow. 170 pounds. So that's interesting. Okay, so that's so really- you. So you have extreme muscle memory on your side. We're so, not just talking about muscle memory <clears throat> physique. We're talking yeah. about muscle memory. Wow, like I actually had, whoa, that's that's actually kind of a big deal. I didn't think, I would not have expected that. Because uh, you were still lifting back then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You yeah. stopped lifting. Yeah. Now, yeah, no, I and know. you went through a really stressful time with your wife. Yeah. When she wow. was when she was almost, you know. I actually did not realize I was that bad. Okay, so, I, so, I, so I'm going <laughs> to tell cr- you. I'm, that's crazy to think, because that what I consider that the worst shape I've ever been in my life. It was 19.8% body fat. Sure. Uh, I had never let myself go like that yeah. for that period of time. So I will, but I was still sporadically kind of lifting. And so I had, obviously I didn't think I wouldn't have thought I had actually more lean mass. So I had, how much lean tissue did I have back then? 170. 
Really? Yeah, yeah. so 212 at, at, I'll do that again. 212 at 19.8%. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh that's 41 almost 42 pounds of body fat minus 212, yeah. So I had way more body fat though, right? Cuz the body fat is yeah, I had 30 I'm 31 pounds of body fat yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have 40 41. Yeah. yeah. So but you had more lean body mass. Yeah. So okay, so I I'm, I'm going to make a prediction. You're going to go get tested. I'm I'm, I'm very 4 weeks, this. okay? 4 Doesn't weeks. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm looking <laughs> yeah. at you. I'm really I, and I feel Yeah. And maybe I'll be eat, maybe I'll be swallowing you know like like uh, swallowing my words here uh, you know moving forward. But I feel pretty confident. I see how you look. I'm usually pretty good at, at guessing this kind of stuff when I look yeah, at people. You're a bit of a carnival wizard. And this. and and you're and now especially considering what we just realized here. And I, I do want to say this as well. Um, all non-fat tissue is considered lean body mass. So more water and fluid in your muscles is going to count as lean body mass as well. And creatine adds a little bit of that. Plus you're more hydrated. Plus you're eating more carbohydrates. Yeah. I, I do want to point this out. And this is where I'm like, I'm, I'm going in with the intent of being as accurate as possible here, where I can easily favor this by loading, loading some water before and loading some carbohydrates because I'm fluctuating. So I went to last night, I went to bed at 215. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to bed at 215. I'm losing all the way down to 209 at night yeah. of water. That's, yeah. how many, that's how much water I'm, I'm oh, losing. Oh yeah, no, night. I'm still, <laughs> I, I still stand by what I'm about to say. Okay. So, I, Cause I think you're also well, well more high. Your mu muscles are just more pumped all the time. Sure, sure, okay. sure, sure. So you're 212, uh, sorry, 209. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. One ninety nine to two hundred nine. Yeah. Uh, I predict you gained thirteen pounds of lean body mass, and you lost three pounds or four pounds of body fat. That's a pretty good guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, That's a I'm pretty. Saying. So if we what did you... that, can can Doug do the math on what what that would put us at? What would, what would that put me at body fat percentage? If uh, if we if I gain ten pounds of muscle. No, I said thirteen. Or thirteen pounds of muscle and lost mm -hmm. three pounds of fat. What would that put my body fat percentage at? Yeah, because my I, I've been look, I've been thinking body fat percentage wise, and I expect to go down about two to three percent. Two to three percent is what I expect to go okay. down. So, okay. but I'm but if I go down two or three percent body fat and I'm two oh nine, that's another way to look at it too. So yep. that, that's I, why that's why I said thirteen pounds. Yeah. Lean body so mass. I mean, you can look at it that way too. Is calculate. Give me what uh, if I was at so so thirteen pounds of lean body mass minus four pounds of body fat. Uh, what does that give us percentage wise? Yeah, I see you about four, uh, thirteen point four percent. Wow, there it is. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. there, there it is. That's about exactly. How much? Okay, this would be mm. great, man. I hope I'm on, <laughs> yeah. I'm on point. You, you should be pretty because that's what that I would have guessed. I would have guessed. You know, it's so. This is what's. By crazy. the way, I want people to understand this. Yeah. This is not typical results. Everybody no. relax. Yeah, but okay. You, you, nobody gains thirteen pounds of lean body mass in four weeks unless. You came from such a crazy deficit, plus you have the know-how of- So check this like out, Adam. though. Listen to how how crazy that is, though. Okay, you, you obviously know. I know I can tell for sure I can see a difference physically. Like, I know, I've, mm -hmm. I mean, I've been pretty damn dialed. You, and I, your arms look at least an inch bigger, which makes so, me know that it's at least 10 pounds of lean body mass. So yep. think about what we just said. Radical, I'm doing a radical change. Holy cow, yeah. 13 pounds of muscle, lost three pounds of fat, which would be this anomaly. Yeah. Most people wouldn't be able to do that. And in people, a, in were, people are probably thinking you do like six, seven days a week in the gym. Well, the and then, well, yeah, right. <laughs> but here's yeah. what's crazy is that that still will only take me from 15.8 to 13 point yeah. something percent body fat. It's not a huge right. shift. Yeah, but bro, to but, gain. But, but understand where, where yeah. I'm going with this is that. If I was half that, it would still be very successful. Yes. If I got down to fourteen point two percent body fat, if, if, if this with if, that with that weight, that would be a huge success. If still, this but was boy, a can that be one month? Yeah. If but, this was a typical person without all that muscle memory behind them, uh, and they just get got started, if you know five pounds of lean body mass in four weeks would be massive. Huge. Would be massive. Yeah. Would be yeah. huge. Four pounds. Huge. You know. Um, and and that's what I would see with clients who are pretty good, who are consistent. You know, I would expect in four weeks we'd gain between three to five pounds of lean body mass. Uh, you know, women lower end, men on the higher end. But you you got such muscle memory, and yeah. the, and the muscle memory we're yeah. working with, bro, is muscle memory. This is you know, it, it reminds forever. me of the kind of muscle memory when you like cast your arm exactly, and then yeah, it, exactly yeah, how quickly that comes back. Yeah. It's insane. I mean, this is also for the 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 listeners. Um, 
this is the strategy that all the fitness professionals use to sell their stuff. Oh my God. If we did before and after, 30 day before and after. <laughs> this yeah. would be such a, a bamboozle. Yeah, and, if we, and, if and it's so funny integrity. because the, the yeah. stuff that flies on the internet is this like, is it real or fake? It's like, no, it's absolutely real. If you take a guy who's been bodybuilding or in fitness for a long time and has had built a lot of muscle and then you let him fall out of shape mm. and then he like goes dialed for 30 to 60 days, he can make radical yes. changes. Again, why I'm constantly stressing to people the value value of just strength training for such a long period of time and it's compounding interest it's literally like i you you have saved up this huge and i just went on this crazy splurge of blowing money but i got it right back real quick because i have so many great investments that yep, are working yep, for me and yep. re refilling that bank account yep. it's like that's what's so cool about being older and actually have been training you know more consistently than not consistently for decades how much of an advantage it huge. is huge Huge yeah. advantage. Huge. Muscle memory is, um, there's no other form of exercise allows this. You could do all kinds of forms of exercise and get fit, but building muscle, there's no such thing as permanent results, uh, everybody. Let's just be very clear here. But it's as close as you can get. Yeah. I mean, uh, how else would you have gained 13? Well, we'll see. We'll see what the numbers say. But I, I feel pretty yeah, I know. confident. Well, let's, yeah. uh, let's not talk too much on it because when <laughs> yeah. I, do, I was jo joking on the way yeah. into the studio Eight today. Eight pounds of body fat. I was going to say like, yeah. oh, five pounds. I, I, I don't want to like, like kill MAPS it. program sales go fucking way down because everyone's like, what the fuck am I going to take this guy's advice for, right? He claims he knows what he's doing and then he got fatter after he did all this. So <laughs> it'll be... Uh, no, I, I'm, what, what do I get if I'm right? If yeah. I hit it, I'll on just the say half a uh, sell, so that way you blow my mind. Are, are you playing yeah. like that? What's that game? The yeah, price, yeah, the yeah, price, yeah. The price, price is right. right. Yeah. One dollar, one dollar, <laughs> one dollar, sir. I'll take one dollar. What do I? I get? I'm, I'm super. I, so you, what you nailed is probably right because I, I was going by body fat percentage. I hadn't done the, yeah. the reverse way of what you did because, and I was thinking, I'll probably have came down to about thirty. Now, what's interesting, and I'll just be honest and share with you guys, is like I feel leaner than that. So that's why I'm tripping out. It's like, and I'm heavier. So mm -hmm. I'm like, we'll see because it could very well be a little leaner, but you know what also might be the case. And again, we're all speculating. Now we're, now I we're look better because I'm filled out. Cause you got muscle. Yeah, I know. Like 15% body fat with a lot of muscle versus 15% body fat uh, with less muscle. Yeah. Yeah. It looks and different. feels. Yeah. Completely yeah. Different. It yeah. looks and feels. Now different. what's cool about that. And this is what, what'll be fun is, um, what I put on or like, so whatever it ended up will actually dick. This is why I love using this stuff. Because right now, what I've been doing is, you know, I told you, I've been just kind of eating when I'm hungry, yeah. keep feeding myself. I've had to get myself up to my protein tank. I've hit it. Now I've started. Now I'm kind of in this, what I would consider a, you know, lean bulk or a mini bulk that I'm in right now. But if all I did was put on a lot of, of muscle, but I really didn't uh, lose body fat, that would shift kind of my thinking. I'd probably yeah. bring myself back down to maintenance or maybe even go into a little mini cut right now. Or if I find out that I lost body fat, you know, uh, lost fat mass, fat mm -hmm. went off and I built muscle, I might be a little more aggressive with the bulk. So this will actually, so the audience can watch real time, what my results come back, None of not, no matter what, I'm not freaking out or making any drastic changes, but my approach may shift based off of how successful I was calorie wise to what I did. You get what I'm saying? Yep. Mm -hmm. If I put on... Uh, if I lost fat and a decent amount of fat and also build muscle, well, then I know I can push the calories yep. even a little bit more yep. and not worry. Cause so here, here's what I'm going to, so I'll make more predictions here. Uh, it, it, you're now in month two, month one, you're just getting back into it. Oh yeah. Okay. This is going to ramp up in month two, month three, it'll even be great. And then maybe slow down a little bit, but what we're seeing right now, bro. You is, know this is this is Maps fifteen too. I by know the way. you're working mm -hmm. out barely. Yes. And by the way, that's what you're supposed to do. I want people to be <sighs> oh, understand. Yeah. yeah. People it's try to get dose. back into shape and they overdo it, and then what happens is they'll see muscle memory. So like, oh, I gained five pounds of muscle. You could have gained ten. Right. But you overdid it. Right. You totally overdid it. I mean, your first week of workouts were. Pathetic. Go I mean, ahead and say it. You can say it. Yeah, you're just, <laughs> He's like trying to be all nice how to say it. He's no, like, it's not. They were appropriate. Like they were pretty much yeah. pathetic. Well, they yeah. were appropriate. I'm right. going to say pathetic maybe for the for someone who has no idea. Yeah, yeah. Like, what's yeah. he doing? I thought yeah. he wants to get back into shape. I mean, listen, they, they a month later, they're still not impressive. No. I mean, uh, no, you're, you're like, you're like four months away from, uh, from really getting after it. Yeah. Like I mean, and there's also a disadvantage too that the, to not hit, it's really difficult. This is one oh, of the most injury. Yes. Yeah. This is one of the more difficult things that I've had to deal 
deal with is trying to work around an injury that I would normally, if I wasn't trying to prove or do something, I would probably be way more on the yeah. rehab recovery, take my time. You know, really, I'm not really trying to push the body right now, but I'm trying to simultaneously m show impressive results while also nursing you know, an injury right now, which is a bit of a juggle, especially you know, on a big muscle. By the way, you, know, you guys, I've heard, I brought this up on the show at least three times. The, I think it's the Denver experiment. That's oh, the Casey one. Knight, the uh, Casey, Casey Vider. Vider Doug, pull that up because it, this was, okay, when I go through these numbers on this experiment, th this was done in the 1970s. Arthur Jones was a scientist, uh, and he's the inventor of Nautilus exercise equipment. He trained a young Casey Vider who ended up becoming later on a, a Mr. Universe bodybuilder, okay? He gained so okay the Colorado experiment. Sorry, uh, give me the numbers on that. Sixty three pounds of muscle in twenty eight days. He gained sixty three <laughs> pounds of muscle in twenty eight days. Now, people, let me tell you this: this experiment is what gives me a little bit of hope. I moved the needle even more than what well, we're talking so about. So people, so people are like, "That's not that was fake." No, no, no. this no. was done at a university. It was managed by scientists. It was documented, so the numbers were real. And everybody's like, "How is that possible?" Here's how: Casey Vider, first of all. Yes, Adam was a pro physique competitor, but and so he's got decent muscle building genetics. You don't get to that level without that, plus hard work. Casey Vider was known as being one of the most genetically gifted bodybuilders of all time. He was a pro bodybuilder at the age of 18, okay? So he was genetically gifted. He also took anabolic steroids, not replacement therapy, but actual steroids like a bodybuilder. Maybe not the doses that they use now. This was the 70s, but he was using some doses. And he went to Arthur Jones after serious illness. So he lost... Not only did he stop working out, he got sick. So he lost lots of muscle. Mm -hmm. So he had massive muscle memory, plus <clears throat> the kind of genetics that are as rare as someone who's seven foot tall, plus <clears throat> anabolic steroids. That's how you get 63 pounds in 28 days. Yeah, and, yeah, it, yeah. and it's legit. It's Perfect legit. Storm. I mean, I, I mean, I don't, obviously I don't think I, I definitely didn't get that kind of results for sure. Right. But I mean, I think we're going to see a mini example of this. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to, I've never come from a place of yeah. this low of lean body mass of previously carrying. I mean, I, for a, a, a very long period of time, for years consistently, I carried over 200 pounds of lean mass. Yeah. For years. So yes. my body, my body didn't just like kind of saw it one time. It like got used to being. That's what there. I'm trying to say. We're not dealing with muscle memory where you're like, you've still been working out. You just weren't training like a pro. You went below where you were for decades, yeah. for decades as mm -hmm. a trainer, as yeah. a young trainer, fitness manager, well before you competed. So we're not even in the territory of getting you close to where you were as a pro. Yeah. Not even close. Yeah, yeah. So this is the kind of muscle memory. That I mean, just, this is the type, again, I, I just like to highlight it's fun. the, the, the uh, I mean, this is. No, I got to ask you this. What's Katrina saying? Is she, is she doing like, oh, you just start working out. You're I right mean, there. yeah. Oh yeah. She, she <laughs> always gets that way. I mean, she's yeah. that way all the time with me is that she's like, it's just so not fair. Right? She's like, she said, says, she says it's two weeks. She goes two weeks of you lifting and she goes, yeah. you radically change your physique. Right. Uh, and I'm actually at a place right now where, I, which is kind of crazy. Like, again, I was so dialed though. I mean, I'm already, this is where I like to be. My weight, my, the way my physique looks, the way I feel, everything like that is like, I wouldn't even. Easy to maintain. Yeah. This is a great, so wherever it lands, body fat percentage, and I'll sh obviously share, uh, th this is the place uh, it, that's very manageable mm -hmm. for me. I mean, I'm not. I'm not like crazy tracking food. I'm kind of tracking food. I'm being mindful of stuff. I'm still enjoying a weekend. I mean, I just got back. One of the things that's definitely not helping me in this is that I just got off of a three day, you know, bender trip of not great sleep, not hitting protein yeah. trade, drinking alcohol, you know, not trying. Like I just came off of that from it, but that's how, how easy of a place I am. I don't know. Easy is the right word, but like this is a flexi flexible yes. uh, a place I am at is that I'm not 4% body fat to where that makes a huge difference on my weekend. It set me back a little bit, but I dialed it right back in and it's, it's an easy, manageable place. Think for of it this way. If you're listening right now, it's like you have a car with a thousand horsepower, uh, but there's no way the tires will grip, but you need to get to 200 miles an hour. You can't gun it right out the gate. You're just going to spin your tires. You have to allow yourself to accelerate. And as you accelerate, you push the gas down a little bit more. You're in a place, Adam, where, where it would be dumb for you to pull every lever. It wouldn't get you there any faster. If, yeah. if anything, it will slow you down. Yeah, yeah. So you're pulling a couple levers, and you're waiting for another you know, month, and then you'll pull another lever, and then another month. And at some point, if you want to keep going, you're not going to drink on the weekends. Right. But right now, that's totally fine. Yeah. And, that, and that's where it's like, you know, again, this whole thing has been fun. It's been a while uh, since I've done something like this. And, and I do geek out on the- Are you enjoying the workouts? 
No. Okay. No, I'm not. Just being honest. No, I, I hear you tell us. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm. Uh, uh, the, Is it because you're not training like you like? You, yeah, like it's, you it's used to? It, this. So the best part of this series is that it's being documented and I need to explain myself where if, if it was me alone with my own ego, I'm going to justify it to anybody but myself. Yeah. So I, I am now treating myself closer to like a client than I ever have. It's really interesting. Is that making your workouts more, you're you training more My workouts smarter. are much smarter and more effective oh, there, uh, which, which I sacrifice the enjoyment a little bit uh -huh. because I go in and I'm like, man, I want to, I want to go yeah. here. I feel good. I should hit this or God, I haven't even felt a real pump yet. Let's just do a couple more of these. And if, if I, I, honest to God, if I wasn't documenting this, I would do those little things just to, to feel good. Yeah, like I, yeah. you know, give it, give a little win here and, and there. But yeah. because yes, but because I know I'm having to explain myself what, through this and I'm like, you know, the trainer in me would tell my client to do this. I'm trying to be that guy. And I didn't realize mm -hmm. how much of that I probably don't listen to when it doesn't matter, right? When it does, when I'm not ha having to explain myself, yeah. I'm going to go, Oh, so what if I overreach, right? Fuck it. I want to do it. I'm going to do yeah, it. Like yeah. where right now I ha I'm on a mission to show that I can, you know, I can move the needle. Say your line. Yep. Come on, say the line. <laughs> yeah, the least so, amount yeah, work. Do the least amount of work to elicit the most <laughs> amount of change. There it is. And you're, I mean, you're talking about, I haven't even got a workout. You know, I'm, I, I'm having some where I'm like, oh, that like yesterday I got a, a nice pump on the legs for the first time. I just transitioned, by the way, from MAPS 15 to a uh, a split routine. Yeah. So I just, little, yesterday was the first workout of, uh, or second workout, excuse me, of this new split routine. So I ran basically a MAPS 15 with the injury yeah. modification protocol for the first four weeks. Attention trainers and fitness fanatics on November 12th at 4 p.m., Adam and I are teaching a webinar for personal trainers in particular, how you can keep your clients during the holiday season. It's a free class. It's totally free. We're going to teach it. If you're interested, click on this link. Hey, I want to talk about, uh, we mentioned coaching. Uh, I'm going to change directions a little bit. I have, a sh I have, we have one of our coaches in our coaching program shared a big win um, that she had with one of her clients. So I'm, I'll All read right. some of this, right? So I love these. she's a new trainer at a big box gym. Um, got, you know, certified through NASM initially, and then, you know, obviously working with us, she's in our coaching program. So she has a client, female in her sixties, multiple problems with her hip, needs a knee replacement, overweight, started training a month ago. Week one, she tells her the trainer straight up first session. It's, it's not going to work out. I need to commute 30 minutes to meet at the gym. Not going to happen. I'm also not going to do more than whatever we're doing in our session. No extra activities. She works full time, doesn't have time for it. Weekends are off limits because she wants to spend it with her family. Three weeks in, she's now booking three sessions per week, a month in advance. On Saturday, does yoga. She leaves happy, a smile, full of excitement, um, and is loving the whole process. That's three cool. weeks in. Isn't that great? That's, That's so great. I love that when you get a client who comes in with, you know, terrible expectations, probably because they failed in the past. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Iwalina is her name. That's a trainer. She's like three weeks in. And she's, she's saying that the coaching really helped her, uh, you know, the way we communicate, how you work with clients, how you communicate with them yeah, yeah. and so on. So that's excellent. Did you know. guys see the, uh, this is kind of along those lines, but the kind of a tongue in cheek or funny, uh, client, uh, remember the, the, it was, it was super famous and went viral years and years ago of the lady who got the, uh, I think it was for Mother's Day or her for her birthday, she got the gift of a personal trainer for a week and then the, and she documents each day her experience. No. Oh my God, I posted it in the forum. You guys didn't see that? No. Yes. Come on, tell me you know that story. It's it's hilarious. She talks about how he walks in with flowing oh, hair my, and he's jacked this. and he's this like- been around for a while. Oh, forever. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, been yeah, around yeah, forever. Yeah. It's been I've viral for a very long time. I shared the actual whole thing inside mm. the coaching thing okay. because we were talking about stuff like this and experiences that clients have it's just i think it's one of the most comical uh, things because <laughs> she goes step by step of like yeah, how, i love them and yeah, then all of a sudden yeah, i hate them yeah, yeah, yeah by the end she's yeah. just like the, the the like the language is it's obviously written by someone who's an incredible writer and so it's like super yeah. funny the way you watch the transition from I, excited to get your buff hot <laughs> trainer training you, I, you know, to hating his guts by yeah, the end of the week you know? <laughs> i love the success stories in that forum uh the coaching forum because uh well obviously we were trainers so I can relate to like all, and I love when trainers go in there with a, with a challenge. Like I got a client 
they don't want to do this. They want to do that. Like, what do I do? And you get all this input from other trainers. And if we're in there, we'll jump in. And then I love it when they come back. It worked. Yeah. It totally worked. That was such a hard thing to find coming up as a trainer because like everybody had such big egos yeah. and, and was so isolated and competitive. And, you know, I was lucky. I had like one gym where we had good, solid trainers that we would actually go into a break room and we would discuss these things and we would troubleshoot and, and figure out like who has a specialty that would, you know, you, you'd know like a little bit more in this direction and you could pull from that. But now we have that, you know, at, at a lot larger scale in this like coaching program, which is so rad. Yeah. The best resource you could have as a trainer always, always, always is a more experienced trainer yeah. absolutely a more experienced trainer especially a more experienced knowledgeable trainer that's it like they'll they'll often walk you off the ledge because look here's the deal when you're a trainer if you can get 50 percent of your clients uh to the point where they love exercise they do it for the rest of their life you are killing it 50 percent you're killing it that's how tough of a job being a trainer or coach is is 50 percent is amazing so oftentimes you just especially when you're new the first few years like, what am I doing wrong? You know, mm -hmm. my client, this they're, they're, it's not working. They don't want to do what, I, what, what I'm telling them. Um, it's hard to get them results. And they just want to do these crazy diets that they read about. Then they go talk with an experienced trainer and the experienced trainer is like, no, 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 it's okay. We're doing fine. Be patient. Here's how you communicate this. Here's how you communicate that. Focus on this. Don't worry about this other stuff. And it like brings you down, get back in the game and you come out and you win. My favorite thing about business in general, and this is co other companies and including ourselves that do this, that disrupt industries and spaces, that come in and shake up how the norm or how things are done. We did that obviously in the podcast and programming space, right? How many bad pro how many bad programs out there? How many people were uh, uninformed on the the proper way to train? And now we're moving into my favorite space, which is helping coaches and trainers and disrupting it this exact same way. Meaning there is no shortage of great certifications out there. There's lots of great certs to be more educated on physiology, on nutrition, exercise science, like mechan biomechanics. Like there is a lot to, to, that is out there already that's incredible that makes you a very smart trainer. But that is only half the battle. If you can have all of this knowledge, if you do not know how to apply that and communicate that to the client, and it isn't just regurgitating the science or the study, it's learning how to work with people and personalities and different behaviors yep, yep. and psychology. And to me, there is this massive gap in our space for that. There is not a lot of people at all, especially that have like a course that are communicating that. And that was like, the idea was like, we're not going after competing with NASM or NCSF or ISAA. Like none of that is what the goal was. It was, where is the gap? What, what are they not fulfilling very well? And mm -hmm. can we service and, and fulfill that need for clients? It's the sales part. It's the communication and yeah. keeping the them consistent. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah knowing how to apply all this knowledge that you've got from the certificate. I just think that, uh, and if you don't know and you haven't experienced that with us, like again, just like we started the other business, we're going to come from a place of let us show you for free. Come watch the webinars that we're doing every other month. It's absolutely That's free. That's why we're doing them. Absolutely free. Ne next one's in. in November, and uh, we're going to be teaching that one. You and I, we're going to do them every other month. They're yeah. totally free. Mm -hmm. Come watch if you're a trainer or coach. Like our our my, our dream is to positively impact coaches and trainers because they're the ones that are making the big difference. They're the ones in the space that are making the big difference. And listen, it's not the gyms, it's not the supplement companies, it's not the it's the trainers and coaches. We've you know? had people ask us, uh, especially of the trainers, that you know wanting us to do a specific podcast for that this is our way of dipping our toes into that is can we build an audience that shows up every other month to these webinars because we provide so much value make us want to do more make us want to do one every month and then every other week and then like and the way we do that is by building a consistent audience of people that are getting value from that and this is us showing that this is what we want to commit and do and i hope okay that we deliver so well that we build it to the, be the size of the podcast, but nothing but trainers yeah, and aspiring trainers and coaches that are following. And you find this at trainerwebinar.com. Uh, you know, I was going to bring up something about diet here. We'll take another a turn here. Um, do you guys know how big of a difference there is in farmed salmon versus wild-caught salmon? I know a substantial difference. Um, Huge. Yeah. 
huge difference when you is it like the, the metals and it, it's a big difference across the board so yeah. you know it's like grass-fed meat versus conventional meat and there's differences mm -hmm. but when it comes to fish yeah massive difference so well, wild I know, in, along the, sorry to interrupt you but along the lines of what we've been talking about all day today which is like these hormone profiles yeah. and that i've seen the stuff that they show on um the farm raised fish, how they change sex and stuff. Yep. Like their uh, yeah. their chemistry, their hormone chemistry is changing so much. They actually change change their sex inside there. And so I can only imagine, just like we were talking about what hormones do to the human yeah. body. Yeah. How, and how it changes that meat. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. how much oh. is that being changed? Oh, okay. So three ounce filet of wild salmon uh has half the fat content of farm salmon. Why? Because wow, farm half. salmon has double the saturated fat content. Wow. Double. Wow. Not a little difference, a massive difference. Then you get into pollutants uh, like yeah. um, like POPs, okay? These have been linked to several diseases, type 2 diabetes and obesity, uh, for example. Um, the amount of these, of, of for example, PCB polychlorinated by phenyl, uh, which is a type of a POP, 16 times higher in farm fish. Wow. Ooh. 16 times. Times yeah, it's not a little amount. This is a big deal. Like if you eat salmon uh, and you eat it regularly, you know, once, twice a week, three days a week, go with wild. That is a, if you eat it like, you know, once a month or whatever, I don't know if it makes a huge difference, but you eat it, you know, more regularly, it makes a massive that's difference. 50% of the saturated fat. That's a big, 50%. That's, huge, that's wild. So, so Butcher Box has this really great uh, wild caught salmon that they individually pack. So they come in these individual packets. This is what we give our kids. Mm -hmm. And you buy them. They're super easy to cook. You just take each one out, defrost we it, just cook did, it We oven. just ordered it. We just got it in the box. I haven't cooked it yet. So have you cooked it yet, Doug? I always like to hear how you cook it. I have not, actually. Okay. I just got some. So My I'm, kids love it. Yeah? Oh, yeah. My son especially loves You guys just pan frying it? Or you guys, what do you guys, do you know how your oven. wife is cooking? You know, uh, yeah, bake it in the oven? Mm -hmm. yeah. You just put it on some, you know, what's that called? I want to yeah. smoke it. That's what I want to do. Mm. That's why I was curious if you would oh, do yeah, it. Oh, yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. yeah. So I got it. So I'll do it. Maybe I'll look up some recipes to smoke it. I'd like to, to, to smoke eats it. it. I do the chicken fingers. <laughs> <laughs> just just a, like another bag of chicken nuggets. Yeah, please. Yeah, give me the chicken nuggets. Give me the chicken. What do they call fish? Fish nuggets or whatever? Fish sticks. Bro, I lived off a fish stick. Did you? Oh, as a God. trainer. Oh, yeah. As a dude. trainer? Yes. Did you like say you ate fish? Bro, my, yeah, totally. Of course, of course. <laughs> my first five plus years of, a, a you know, my early 20s, bro, 20 to 25, like I still was eating fast food as a trainer. In fact, like- How a, often, daily? Dude, like, oh, yeah. Like a dummy too. I used to use that. It's like, like see, I can eat McDonald's every yeah. day. Oh, yeah. You're like, oh, I am with YFM. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to think that that I used to communicate health and fitness that way. It just shows you well, where, see, I, where you know, I was at, you know? I didn't grow up eating a ton of, you know, garbage food. Luckily, we had dinner every night. My mom would cook it, um, you know, old world, right? So that was cool. But because I was skinny, it, if I, as a kid, or I thought I was really skinny and I always wanted to gain weight, any way I could get calories was great for me. Mm, so yeah. if it was fast food... Like McDonald's would have those sales on their cheeseburgers. Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have 10 of those and just eat all of them. Dude, I remember a definitive moment with that when we had to go. It was me and Nick, and we were, like, training to be a trainer. And we had to go to, like, uh, Mountain View or wherever to, like, uh, go through the the whole, like, little process. And it, we broke off with all these other trainers, and we, were, like, had lunch. And, like, I'm just like, I'm going to go to Carl's Jr., you know? <laughs> and, like, <laughs> nobody went with me. <laughs> <laughs> they had their little packed, you know, lunches and everything, and they're out there, like, you know, sitting in the parking lot, and I'm just, like, mowing down on, like, a, you know, double Western bacon cheeseburger. Hey, that's the cheese. I think that's the cheeseburger of choice, fast food cheeseburger of choice for, like, the dudes. Bacon like, Western. Oh, that, that was my favorite. Bacon Western. Western. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but that, I was like, oh, my God. I, I just, yeah, I got this, like... Total realization. Like I, I think I should change. When was the last? This. When was the last time you had a bacon western cheeseburger? It oh. was probably then, dude. Like, yeah. cause, cause that was after college, and then that was like, I was like, I gotta stop doing the fast food thing, and then I just kind of broke off. I feel like you guys see that, on my. Did you see on my drive that I just did that we no. stopped at Taco Bell? Did you see that? Did, uh -uh. By the way, did you see that Taco Bell? Wait, did you actually? You Wait. actually ate Taco Bell? No. Okay. Of course <laughs> yeah. not. Oh, you had to go pee. I something? felt so bad because no, I was in a group of like I don't know, was there twelve of us or something mm. like that that are all we're all driving and we we're driving back from Sonoma on Highway One. Oh, yeah. 
And they and like Drunk they, people they, love there was somebody that Bell. organized it, so they had organized stops for us all the way. We're stoned people, yeah. and we're on our way back. And you know, like I mean, they they know I'm obviously obviously they are, they know I'm in this this series, but it was already scheduled for them to do that. And you know, I was like, like Katrina and I are looking at each other, like, yeah, no, we're not. <laughs> yeah, but the, no, uh, the, not have you guys never seen the Taco Bell on Pacifica? No one saw those videos. Yeah, you guys I, didn't see any of those videos? Uh -uh. I did pictures and videos. Is of it, it like the one in Demolition Man? Bro, it's like it a is. Nice restaurant. Yes, yeah. no. <laughs> It Wait, is. This, is it the turquoise one? It is the sickest like Taco Bell I've ever seen. Like it's on the sand. It's on the beach. It's wow. the. It's iconic. Like yeah. yeah. When I post it, everybody's like, "Oh my god, that's yeah. famous." I go there all the time. Wow. Like yeah, look up Taco Bell Pacifica, and it, I've seen that. And then there, there's a McDonald's in Lake Forest in Chicago that we used to go there like for Sunday because they had like Sunday brunch, and it was like really like it was it different. Is. It was. Way high end. Look at that. Wow. What is this? It's like a four star restaurant. Bro, it looks sick. How it's weird ordering a bean burrito, you know? Uh, a chalupa. That, you clicked off in that of restaurant. That. <laughs> a chalupa. <laughs> so gorgeous. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? Look at that. Yeah. Look how beautiful that is. That's nice. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and the whole backside has got out. a deck where you can eat outside, and then the the whole side, this side and the backside are all windows. So you can enjoy the ocean before you have oh, diarrhea. It's, oh, and it was <laughs> It was <laughs> right before you got to go popping. Look at this. Yeah. Listen yeah. on YouTube is the most beautiful Taco Bell. Yeah, hands down, it was. The inside uh, was not like you see the back deck. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, look at the inside. It was a cool, very yeah, cool spot. But yeah, no, we didn't. Did eat. you guys ever? What well, a you, waste. Well, your boys are young now, and I'm sure you don't do this. But did you ever take your boys, uh, Justin, to the McDonald's to have them play in the like the, the play area, the balls and whatever? You know, uh, that's something I didn't do with them. Yeah, yeah. me neither. I, yeah, never. Never. How often do you think they clean those those balls in there? Oh God, gross, it's disgusting. Oh, Never. It's terrible. Some Never. kid probably throws they come them out in with there. pink oh, eye gross. immediately. Yes. You know, like, yeah, gross. <laughs> yeah. So How do you even clean those things? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you just spray bleach all. Speaking over. of which, have you guys seen people will post like fast food workers will post the ice machines and they'll open the ice machine. Oh, I don't want to see that. It's all mold. Oh God. No, really. Oh, it's all mold. I've seen a dude. You never yeah. clean them. I mean, the restaurant industry, I've seen a lot. Like, so it's, <laughs> yeah, I can have. only imagine like the degrees, you know, when you go from that to like fast food, like how, you know, the oversight is a little. I thought they have like, don't they have like random inspections that happen quite frequently or is that not true? You would hope. It's like how they test no. for steroids I mean, I in the in the NFL. This isn't, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> like a random guy. I'm just going to check back yeah, here, make yeah, sure yeah, clean. Yeah, yeah no. That's, Looks good. Can I get a free cheeseburger? Uh, you pass. I, 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 you know, I don't, this isn't a, it wasn't a scientific study or anything, but there's like people that post and they're like, they work there and they'll open the ice machine and there's mold gross, dude. throughout the whole thing. So gross. Which, I mean, mold grows in places like you that. You got to burn the ice, dude, and clean it. I mean, that's just like protocol. I didn't even know that. I yeah. wouldn't even have thought that it would grow in like an ice machine. Thing yeah. like but I guess I make sure the moisture and the melting of the ice and probably the hot cold. My, going my wife, always the my wife the never grossest. gets ice in her drinks. And I thought she was a psycho. She never gets ice in her drinks. But now it turns out she was brilliant. She just gets the soda if she gets soda. I'm going to tell Katrina this. Katrina's the opposite. She wants a full cup of ice and just a little bit of soda or fluid He's, or whatever. That's assuming they clean the gun, you know, the, 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 that the, they spray the soda, the soda with. Well, oh, well Coke, I've, I've well, you guys are unscrewed ruining. that well, and then looked at all the cultures Well, there. don't worry about it because yeah. Coke kills everything. It just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. You, ever seen it? you ever seen it clean a nail? Yeah. A rusted nail? <laughs> yeah. That Coke is fine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what, true. Whatever yeah. bacteria is living in that thing is dead. It takes, it takes yeah. rust yeah. right off. Yeah, yeah. You kind of rust and grime inside my... I remember organs, the first time gone. I saw that experiment. I went, "Holy shit! There's yeah. that's crazy." You ever seen that? Where they put a rusted nail inside Coke, yeah. they pull it out. Coke it's like all like shiny. The, the the magical cleaning agent, yeah. you know. Apparently, who so. was it that posted? I think it was Elon Musk. He posted a, a bring back original formula Coke. They don't want Coke. Yeah, <laughs> Have you seen the other post they were doing? This was a, a popular thing just a few years ago that went viral of the people that would uh, leave McDonald's out for like a year. Oh yeah, like uh -huh. the, the 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 fries and the burgers, and just leave it for like a year, and it was just like so. Nothing. There was a famous one of that where they showed margarine versus butter, yeah. and they put ants next to it, and the ants don't touch the margarine yeah. at all. They yeah, leave it not alone at all, but they'll crush the butter. Oh uh -huh. really? Yeah, I don't think I've seen that. You know one what else before. ants like, Justin? Let's <laughs> 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 not talk about. Uh, that. I was like, you this. guys know the inside joke. Uh, Sorry, everybody. Right, Can't yeah, tell yeah. you yeah, what till, next, <laughs> till next time. It was uh, disgusting. Ask me later. Uh, we have a shout out. Uh, yeah, J C Santana. Yeah, yeah. Great guy. What's his Instagram? Is that his Instagram? Yeah. Okay. Great guy. Smart fitness guy. He's been Old around. Old school dude. Been around for a long time. And he knows his stuff. And it, what I like about him is he he knows his stuff, but he knows how to communicate it. So he understands. 
prioritizing what's important and not what's not important. That's what it's what happens when you yep. you combine science with experience. Yep. You have somebody that understands the science that's been doing it for a really long time and knows how to sift through all the bullshit and uh, does an incredible job. I've seen his content, been watching him now for a few months now. So yeah, it's a good shout out. I like it. Look, you've heard the phrase, you are what you eat, but that's actually not accurate. It's what you are what you digest. You are what you break down properly. So if you're eating a high protein diet, noticing digestive distress or gut issues, uh, you're not getting all that protein. You're not getting all those nutrients. Well, digestive enzymes make the difference. There's a company called Bioptimizers. They make a product called Masszymes. This is designed for people like you, fitness fanatics who want to utilize every nutrient that you eat so it can get to your muscles. You can recover faster, build more muscle, get better digestion. Go check them out. Go to buyoptimizers.com. That's B I O P T I M I Z E R S.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 10, get 10% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Sarah from Ohio. Hi, Sarah. Hey, hey. Hi. How can we help you? Promise myself I'm not going to go all fangirl on you guys. So. <laughs> Deep breath. I'm a mature woman. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. I did. I did write my question down though. That way I don't word vomit all over you. All right. Just a second. I brought my poncho. <laughs> all right. So, um, I used to have an eating disorder and was underweight. Um, I was a long distance runner, but got injured during my last 50 K and that's kind of where weight training kind of saved me. Um, I found you guys around the time I started lifting and the information was really just incredible. Um, so because of you guys, I started a reverse diet. It took me about two years, but I eventually got from 115 pounds. That wasn't, I had kind of been in recovery for a little bit, but 115 pounds to 145 and felt freaking amazing. I was so strong in the gym, loved it. Um, so this past summer I did my first cut. And I lost 15 pounds in 11 weeks. And it kind of freaked me out because it took so long to build and I was just like gone. Um, so I decided to give reverse diet another try. Um, and I ended my cut July 12th around there. I was in maintenance for about a month. Um, so I've been on a bulk for about seven weeks now and I'm not gaining any weight. I've been stuck at 138 pounds since seven weeks ago till now. Um, so my question kind of has three parts. Um, number one, is it possible for a bulk to be working even if my scale isn't moving? And then two, is it bad if the only way I can bulk is dirty bulking? And then three, could I be working out too much on a bulk? There's, and yeah. I brought my pencil. Okay. Y yes and yes to the last two for mm -hmm. sure. Um, okay. It is not a bad sign. Um, it's actually... A, pretty cool that you're able to be in a bulk right now and you're not just putting weight what on did, the scale. Where were your calories at and what did you move them up to? What, what was the maintenance and then what did you go to for the bulk? Um, so because of my eating disorder, I can't track calories. Um, so I track my protein. So I'm hitting 140 to 150 grams of protein. Um, the only difference when I was in like a cut and a bulk, when I was in a cut, I just ate what felt good. I didn't force myself to eat more. Um, when I'm in a bulk, I feel like I force myself to eat beyond what's comfortable. So I don't know calorie wise. I do know only protein. What's the goal with the bulk? Get strong, grow okay. my glutes. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I yes. get that. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. Are you Which, getting, okay. So are you oh, getting sorry, stronger? Are you getting stronger? I'm getting stronger. I've added an inch and a half to my glutes oh, over the past wow. seven weeks. It's you're, working. You're doing, yeah, you're good. It's you, working. You, you can go. literally, okay, so uh, I'm assuming that you probably haven't been watching the docu-series on YouTube that I'm doing right now. Uh, no. So I, on Mind Pump TV, you'll enjoy it because it's literally kind of what the goal is right now. My goal is to build muscle and kind of lose some body fat and and stay right around the same weight on the scale. So you're watching me kind of balance that right now. So it's actually totally okay for you to be in a quote unquote bulk, but not see weight on the scale going, you, what you might be, especially if you're getting stronger, if you're getting stronger, if you got stronger and added an inch to your glutes. Yeah. You're doing the right thing, but your weight didn't go up. You built muscle and you, lost fat. And you got leaner. Yeah. So you actually did, you're in the Goldilocks zone. You're doing great. Oh, okay. Yes. yes. Yep. And okay. The second question is, is it bad if the only way I can bulk is dirty bulking? Well, you're bulking now. Yeah. You're actually doing really well. So I'm assuming what you mean is, is it bad if the only way I can gain weight on the scale is with the dirty bulk? That's right. Okay. Yeah. And so I would say you're getting stronger and you're building muscle. 
like no need to push any further. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And if you have so, to eat, if you have to eat, what would be a dirty bulk for you? Like yeah. describe that for me. So last, like whatever, last winter, whenever I was doing it, it was forcing myself to eat three Oreos at night. Forcing, because <laughs> I just, I literally have the weirdest relationship with food. Like, okay, this morning I hit legs today. This morning I try to hit, you know, a good amount of carbs before I go in. For whatever reason, sometimes I will just get like the ick. So I'm literally eating a rice cake and I'm just like, I cannot eat another uh, bite of this rice cake or I will throw up. Okay. So it's like, I don't know. My okay. relationship with food is just weird. Yeah. So I have to like eat. I don't know, like force myself to drink orange juice, you know, to be yeah. like this extra calories. Okay. All right. Mm. All right. So now I, I, this is making more sense. So this is really remnants of the, the past eating disorder. Okay. The, the feeling that, so. yeah. So, okay. In this scenario, forcing yourself to eat is okay. That's actually what it looks like a lot of times for people coming out of an eating disorder like anorexia. Yeah where um, they kind of do have to, it feels like they're forcing themselves all the time because they have this long lasting relationship with food where it just, yeah. it doesn't feel good. It's bad. So I think right. you're okay. I mean, three Oreos, yeah. like, it's I mean, if, if you think that's a dirty bowl, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just like, it's 130 calories. I'm trying to, yeah, yeah. no, you're yeah, doing, you're, yeah, you're, you're doing, doing okay. okay honey. Yeah. yeah. You're getting okay. stronger. You're doing okay. I focus on strength. <laughs> I wouldn't even look okay. at the scale. I think the scale is probably not serving you. Uh, I think strength in the gym, Circumference measurements is okay, but strength. I like strength. Strength strength and protein, grams of protein is perfect That's for it. you. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Just keep doing what you're doing, and I think you're in a very good place. The last question is, are you working out too much in a bulk? What is your workout? Um, So I work out five days a week right now. I hit legs three days a week. Because like on this one, I really wanted to grow my shoulders, my back, and my glutes. Um, So I am at the gym, especially for leg day, like two, two and a half hours but I'm resting like three minutes or more. My kids are in school. So I really don't like, I have the time for it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I wondered if that was why, but again, Dude, I've been fixating on the scale muscle, and like gaining weight. Muscle mommy is the program for you. Yeah, muscle it, mommy is literally those focus points. That was the whole reason why we wrote that. So you, we, are you, do you have that yet or no? No, I've done aesthetic and anabolic. Yeah, no, muscle mommy. You love we're, it. We're going to send you muscle mommy okay. and follow the programming because oh. okay. people tend to have this, when you're trying to push to gain and you're bulk, they tend to also overdo the lifting part. It's like you, you just need to send a signal to build muscle. You feed it the adequate calories, you'll grow. And part of what may keep you from building or adding more is just overtraining for the amount of nutrients mm -hmm. that you're getting. So, you know, follow up with something that we've laid out programming wise, follow muscle mommy, the way it's laid out, keep doing what you're doing uh, nutritionally. Yeah. And I, I think, but you're, I mean, you're not doing bad either way. I mean, you're getting stronger, you're yeah, gaining you're some good. size. <clears throat> Uh, yeah. you're doing okay. No, you're doing great. Yeah. Okay. You're doing great. Okay. Especially considering um, where we came from. So you're, you're doing incredible. Is it a good kind of just, um, looking at macros? Like once I get to a point where I'm able to kind of track and not be triggered by it in a bulk, is it a good, just kind of basic generic hit, you know, body weight of protein, like you guys say, and then for carbs, if double your body weight, is that tend to be a good simple answer? It depends on the individual and, and what your maintenance is, but I'm going to be honest with you. You're probably never not going to get triggered from, from tracking a lot. Really? It's probably, yeah. Yeah. I mean, how long did you struggle with your, with your disordered eating? Let's count how long I've not struggled with it. That's the smaller one. Yeah. I've been in like active recovery for probably three or four years now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're, you're probably yeah. always going to get, look, and you, and I'm 45 years old. Listen, I'm 45 years old. I still have a complicated relationship with exercise. Um, and I've been working out since I was 14. You're probably always going to get triggered from, from tracking and pushing the tracking. And what it's probably going to look like for you, Sarah, is this kind of lifelong push and pull with these types of things, but you sound very self-aware. Yeah. I think if you always turn your focus to strength and then health, I think that'll direct you more in the in the right direction. Always. I, I also think that you could you could literally only track protein. I mean, uh, that, that's kind of what I'm going through this this series right now too. Is I'm showing people that just me knowing where my protein intake is is enough. Just knowing where I think my I just listened to one of that. I've been playing catch up on episodes, but um, I think I heard you say that one about just tracking protein. Yeah, just yep. tracking protein. Okay. It's it, that's plenty because yep. because with it, when it comes to carbs and fat, so long as you're hitting your essential fat, because that's the next most important thing, right? First, but in a bulk, that's not going to happen. You're not going to miss that. I don't think, especially if you're eating meats. If you're eating uh, eating whole foods and meats, you're going to hit your fat. You're going to be okay. So real, as long as you're hitting essential fats, which is important hormonally and and balance and health, it's essential. 
and you're and you're do and you're tracking your protein. Honestly, the the rest you don't need to worry too much about, and you can build a physique that you want and be very very happy. And I, I where you're at right now, I mean, I think coming from 115 eating disorder to strong 145 and do and being able to push calories, lift, and stay the same on the scale is a very good yeah, place. Good. Very good place I to be. Cry. Yeah, right. very good place. Good job. Yes. Okay. We're gonna send. Thank muscle, you guys so much. We're gonna send muscle mommy over to you, Sarah. Yeah, follow that thank program. You, that's really sweet. Yes. Okay. Thank exactly. you guys. I appreciate you. All right, you Sarah. It. Thank you. Bye. All right. When I heard her say force feed, I know I thought the same thing. I was like, well, it's either the the direction I went was yeah. either okay because you could have a, a a dysfunctional relationship to food, and and sometimes it swings, sometimes it's starving, and then going in the other direction, yeah, right? Excess, yeah. But more often than not, uh, it's it's just eating is uncomfortable. Yeah. And so when you come in, when you come out of recovery, when you're recovering uh, with eating disorder. All of it feels kind of like forcing yeah. yourself. That's why when she said three Oreos in a rice cake, a different perspective. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why I said, "What's a dirty bulk to you?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like a dirty bulk to me is a large pizza. Yeah, yeah, right. Three Oreos yeah. is a cut for me. That's like <laughs> I treat I know. It. So, yeah, it's a different yeah, scenario. Yeah. No, there. great, great question. Good, good thing you got to that point for for sure. And I, you know, and I think it's so good advice too to tell her that you you may never get completely no. away from that. And no. the less you have to track, and you can be because she's obviously she looks healthy. Yeah, yep. so she's in a very healthy place. And as so long as she's still getting strong in the gym, she's hitting that protein take. She could literally just hover where she's at and yeah. never kind of so change. No, it'll working. end up happening. Yeah, she'll, she'll get a little, yeah, leaner, she'll get a little, little leaner. Yep. She'll build a little muscle and just kind of stay, and just keep rotating programs. Like she's going to continue to build and improve her physique. Our next caller is Dan from Iowa. What's up, Dan? What up, Dan? What's going on? What's happening, dude? How are you guys doing? Uh, thanks for the stuff you guys provide on this show. It's very helpful. You got um, it, Probably about a couple years older than you guys, but I. Relate to a lot of your stories as kids. It's just kind of funny to hear all that stuff back in the day. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, Dan, Doug's got you by about 30 years, bro. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote a brought to source of school. Yeah. Uh, so, so my question, um, 47 years old, I've been lifting pretty consistent since 2012. Um, about two years ago, I did a Murph with a friend of mine, and I seem to have trouble getting rid of tendonitis, particularly in my elbows and my knees. Um, on other than that, besides my lower back problems, I just can't seem to increase weight no matter what I try to keep myself from getting injured. It just seems to happen. Uh, so I guess my question is how do you progress back into working out when you're, uh, injured, like with something chronic, like tendonitis or lower back problems in order to, uh, add weight to your workouts, uh, it's pretty much hindered by the pain to do any heavier lifting than what I'm doing right now. Are you, uh, are you training like CrossFit person? Do you train at a CrossFit gym or are you training traditional? How you, what's your programming look like? Just traditional. I just do whatever, uh, kind of like a uh, maps anabolic or something like that. Ever since, most- ever since you started feeling this pain, uh, did you take time off? Uh, did you modify anything? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when it first came about, I took about a month off and just walked and didn't do anything. Then I was reading about, uh, tendinopoly or whatever it is. So I started doing progressive loading and then like cross member massage and I was able to get most of it out. I just have a few spots here and there, but it just seems to always come back. Like I pretty much have been pain free for about, I don't know, uh, a month now. I mean, yesterday I was doing skull crushers and my, I felt that, uh, tendon, yeah. uh, from your elbow to your tricep just light up and it just hurt like hell the rest of the day. I'm just trying to figure out what can I do to keep this tendonitis from coming back. So, Shul- shoulder and wrist mobility. Yeah, yeah. So, so I would work on mobility and then you're going to have to avoid exercises that aggravate those areas. So like you, you, you mentioned one that tends to be a culprit for the elbow skull crusher, a tricep pe- press down is much less um it's actually a lot or, safer for or, the elbow. or switch to dumbbells or, or dumbbells or switch to dumbbells in a neutral position and, and here's the other thing if you start to get stronger rather than going up in weight slow the rep down that's another way mm-hmm. but sometimes what happens so here's what tends to happen right we have pain because of tendonitis we wait till the pain goes away and we're like i'm back to normal you're not yeah. you're just at the point where you're not hurting but you're not fully recovered yet so you got to give it some time uh, mobility work helps myofascial release helps and then there's certain supplements that can help during this process. So uh, I like omega-3 fatty acids. And then bromelain three times a day on an empty stomach is a really effective uh, anti-inflammatory. And both of those won't slow down recovery. A lot of anti-inflammatory slow down recovery. What about thymus and beta? Are, 
Well, you're talking now peptides, right? Well, he's got he's got peptides up there, so you may as well talk to him about yeah, it. Yeah, are you using are you trying injectable BPC or just the oral? Um, I tried the oral stuff. I guess that goes up to my second question: is how long do you stay on a supplement to know if it's working? I mean, I've never felt any different on. I stopped. I stopped doing the testosterone stuff. Um, I never felt any different on that. I never felt any different on uh, creatine or whey protein, other than my stomach gets upset. So how long do you stay on a supplement to know if it's working or not? Uh, well, it depends on what you're taking. So BPC one five seven and thymosin beta, you'd probably do like a ninety day cycle along with mobility work and avoiding movements that bother those areas. And what they're going to do is accelerate any potential healing. Now, what I mentioned earlier with bromelain, bromelain, you'll notice anti-inflammatory effects within a week. Um, and so you'll just feel better. Omega-3, that's more just a general changing your fatty acid profile to make it less inflammatory. And that's just something you probably want to take on a, on a regular long-term basis. But the BPC thymosin is probably a 90-day amount and, and, and it's not oral. So oral BPC mostly goes to the gut. Mm -hmm. It's injectable BPC, uh, that, that uh, works in the areas you want. And then combine that with thymus and beta. And anecdotally, that's like the best thing, um, that we're hearing from people yeah. who are using both. It might be to your advantage to, you know, really move more towards unilateral training for a bit. And, um, you know, our symmetry program kind of takes you through that entire process, but um, you know, mobility itself is just going to be a practice that's continuous. And this is something too, that uh, we just need to rebuild that, uh, that, that, that security there, that, that, uh, uh response. So it, it helps to kind of protect around the elbow, but wrist and shoulders are going to be, you know, your main focal points. I, that, I think I'll show, I think I'll blow your mind and literally it, their first few workouts. If you, I'm going to have Doug send you prime pro. If you give me 10 to 15 minutes before every workout, especially if you're doing upper body, lower body is not as important, but you should still do it. But 10 to 15 minutes before every workout, doing the wrist mobility work and the shoulder mobility work before you go into your lifts, I, you will feel a difference. I yeah. guarantee you will right away. And it's if just you get the right response. And then if you continue to do that, it'll get better and better and better. Yeah. Let me ask you this, Dan. Is it, is it kind of like this? Like you feel okay? You get stronger, get stronger, and stronger, and then you hit a certain point of strength where things start to hurt. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess I would say that. Um, I, okay. I mean, I do 20, 15 to 20 minutes of prime before I work out. I mean, uh, your handcuffs, shoulder mobility, and okay. then 90, 90, okay. stuff like that. Okay. I've been doing that. I've been doing that since, well, two years now, but that's my work. My, 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 my warm ups is, okay. is uh, that. And yeah, because so here, so here's why I asked that question too. Because the stronger you get, so you get stronger, you get stronger. It doesn't hurt, doesn't hurt. And then it's like when I hit the certain weight. Like for me, for I'll give you an example for me, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm doing barbell squats, once I start to get up to three sixty five, three seventy, I tend to feel certain issues on my body. Now, could I fix that? I could, but it's gonna take a lot of work, and it gets real granular. Okay, but I could work out with three fifteen, three thirty, and feel no problem. So. That's the other thing too. It's like, do we need to get stronger with yeah. or add weight, I should say, or can we just slow down the reps? Can we create more tension, make the weight feel heavier, which gets more important as you get older, especially if you've been working out for a while. If you've been working out for a while, like how much weight were you using for the skull crusher when it started to bother you? Uh, I think I was, I mean, that's uh, 50 to 60 pounds. Yeah. So you could, you could easily go 30, 40 pounds and go slow and stretch and squeeze and stretch and squeeze and get a great workout for your triceps. This this becomes more the name of the game as you get older for sure. It becomes, can I make this weight feel heavier rather than adding weight to the bar? Uh, because as you start to add weight, you start to feel that pain. I mean, you can start to figure things out or try to, but it becomes a real, it's like you're a sleuth trying to figure out kind of what's happening, which you can do, but personally, I, I now I find myself making the weight feel heavier. It's just more enjoyable. I mean, I like Justin's advice of a. I think you should go through a whole cycle of unilateral work. So I think map sure. sym map symmetry would be a great program for you to follow right now. Do you have that yet, Dan? Mm. No, I don't have that one. We'll send that one over to you. Um, it, it just helps, I think, too, like it refocus. So again, like we're we're used to like the progressive overload and being able to stack weights uh, with barbells and with 
you know, by loaded situation. So to take your focus off of that and two, you can kind of pay attention to all the little nuances of like the lateral stability, the twisting, like all those things you're, you're having to account for. It, it definitely uh, places a lot more focus on that. So you can, you can really kind of hone into which angle and which, you know, wrist position and whatnot might tend to aggravate a bit more. Okay. How long have you been working um, out, Dan? Well, uh, probably since 2012, pretty consistent. Oh, good. So years, so over yep. 10 years. How old are you? 47. 47. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, really, you know, this is where there's a lot of value in the way that bodybuilders talk about working out as well. I think balance, stability, always important, always important. But there's a lot of wisdom in the way bodybuilders, more, well, not all of them, but a majority of them talk about training, which is, making the weight feel heavy. Yep. And just as you get older, especially if you're strong and you've been working out for a while, it becomes more important because, you know, adding 10 pounds, 20 pounds of the bar yeah. risk reward after 10 years of lifting, is not going to give you that much uh, of gains, but making the weight feel heavier tends to do that. I mean, you, you would see if you saw the weights I'd work out with 90% of the time, it's like 50% of what I could really do if I wanted to lift heavy, but I'm making it feel heavy and I'm getting better results. It's really embarrassing to watch them. Thanks, Dan. Uh, yeah. So, one more thing, I guess. I'm debating if I want to give up on squats and deadlifts because my lower back just can't handle. No, it. no. So that's that, a, that's uh, that's an imbalance issue for sure. This is why unilateral stuff's gonna be. Yeah, good. yeah. the unilateral stuff will help you with that. Yeah, you come back to it. But right, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, those are fundamental time. movements. You should be able to do them yep. uh, without hurting. Yep. Yeah, the, the unilateral stuff's gonna do uh, do wonders for you there. And keep doing the ninety ninety. That's great. You're doing that. So, and I don't know if you're uh, trying to progress the ninety ninety two. Like so, when I'm doing ninety nineties, that's like the the like the beginning, and then I start trying to do the ninety nineties, and then lifting my heel off the back. Right. So I, I'm trying to intensify it, and I'm trying to work on more of the internal and external rotation of the hips, not just uh. get into the stretch and that's it. It's like, I, now that I'm, I'm in it, I'm doing better. Now I'm trying to progress that and increase my range of motion in my hips. This will help you if you're not doing that already. Dan, one thing we haven't touched on is, is stress and sleep. How would you rank those for yourself? Uh, stress is probably pretty low. My sleep sucks, but that's, I don't know. Okay. I'm trying to figure that out. You know, sense. you know, <laughs> one of the number one side effects of pet poor sleep is, Chronic pain, joint pain, pain, and la and, and inability to recover and adapt. How how bad is the sleep? I'm glad I asked this. Oh, I mean, if I don't take uh, two Tylenol PMs, I'll be up all night just uh, sitting there staring at the ceiling. Okay, th this is okay. your problem. Okay, oh, wow. Okay, yeah, I'm glad I asked this. Y it's your sleep. That's a pretty simple answer. Yeah. I mean, we're giving you a lot of band aids. It's actually what we just did is give you a lot of band aids that'll help. Yeah. That's just to keep you going. Yeah, but, but the, the sleep's everything. There was a, there was a, there's been a few studies now that show the rate of injury, the risk of injury, doubles in one study. I think it said it quadrupled from one poor night of sleep or two poor nights of sleep. So you're you're setting yourself up in this kind of breakdown uh, situation, constant. Um, and if you're if it's as bad as you say it is, that's the place you need to work. That's where I would look. I would yeah. really look at how can I improve. And I'm assuming you've been you've done all the the surface stuff like get sunlight in the morning, don't look at electronics at night, uh, you know, be active, cool room, you know, temperature, all kind of stuff. Are you doing all that normal stuff? Yeah, I could probably lay off the TV at night, but I got the I got the blue blocker glasses. I should wear more often. I'm pretty. I mean, I get outside and walk most of the day. It's just I don't know. It's just a. Uh, um, pain could be there sometimes, but most of the time it's just shutting my mind off. So. Um, I'll just I'll just work on that with meditation or something like that and yeah, see if I can figure I, that. I get that. Man. There's some yeah. There's something underlying. Yeah, yeah for sure. Get, solve that, bro. Solve. I mean, that's all any, the stuff we gave you is. is it's a, the sleep, dude. You ever work with the therapist on your sleep? Uh, any past trauma? Anything like that? I guess never with the therapist on my sleep. Um, I'd have to find one around here, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So past trauma and stuff like that can really impact sleep. If you've done all the the normal stuff. And it hasn't helped. There's an underlying something that that's going to fix everything. I mean, everything we said is going to be a band aid. But if you if you don't fix your sleep, it's going to be a problem forever. This is how powerful sleep is. It is one of those things that we uh, people tend to overlook, and we all hear it. Oh yeah, I know sleep's important, but you know, oh sleep's important, but it's like no, no, but it is that important. It, it's and especially we're, the, in the context of what we're talking about right now. Yeah, like you got this chronic pain going on, and if you are having more bad nights of sleep than you are good yeah. of sleep. That's that's number if, one priority. If you've worked with therapists in the past, I'm assuming it was the work with some trauma. That for sure, 
for sure will impact your sleep, especially, this is very true for men in particular. We tend to be avoidant, so it tends to come up at night or plague us, even if you don't realize it. So that that's where I would go. Okay. All, All right, right. Well, thanks, guys. You got it, brother. Thank All you. All right, dude. Take care. I feel like I hit a nerve at the end there. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah I don't, sleep. It's yeah, like, that was like, a, I don't want to talk about that. Yeah. No, no, that's, that's, that's what <laughs> I How mean. am I going to fix this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it takes yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. that's what it is, dude. <laughs> Not the answer I'm looking for. No, that's what it is. If you have poor sleep, the number one symptom is pain. If he hears this pain, and listens yeah, to this uh, sure. later on, uh, definitely should... Um, Dive into John Deloney stuff. Yeah, John Deloney go. has a lot. His He'll book, connect with them, huh? his book. Yes, yeah, I, th I hope so. He kind of looked like him too. That's what made me think of that. Oh, yeah. Uh, so he yeah, Dan, check out John Deloney's content and his books and the things that he's talking about. I had um, a buddy whose dad was a, a vet. I just remembered this. This was years ago. His dad was a vet. They finally convinced his dad, his dad was in his sixties at this point, to go to see a therapist. He went and saw the therapist and broke down and cried, came back and was pissed at his son. Like, you made me do this. I could, you know, because he doesn't want to show us. Then the next day he called him up. He's like, I haven't slept. Yeah, best like, night of his like life. That I haven't ever, slept like, like a baby. In years. Yeah. yeah. So there's uh, something else. And that's what it is. It was asleep. Like all the stuff we, and just for people listening right now, we gave him great advice if his sleep was good. Yeah, but the fact that his sleep is bad, everything we said, you could throw it away. Well, it's not going to fix it. It's just that that takes now number one priority. If we're Period. ranking, I mean, he still needs to implement that, but that's his whole priority and focus is sleep. That's ninety yeah, percent. When you when we always talk about the big rocks, right? The things that are going to make the biggest change for people or the yeah. impact in them. And you were yes, we were giving all great advice, but the minute that he said that, it was like, oh, oh well, shit. That's that's, the, that's the big rock, <laughs> especially in this kind. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's like one of those things that everybody knows. Sleep is important. But when you're getting signs like this that are they're, they're screaming at you, you need to fix your sleep, and you're still trying to band aid yeah. everything, right? This is like you got to fix that, and and so much of this other stuff will start to fall in place. Hey, sorry to interrupt. It's October. Maps Muscle Mommy is fifty percent off, half off. If you're interested, click on the link below. All right, back to the show. Our next caller is Yasmin from Washington. Hi, Yasmin. Hello. How can we help you? How you Hello. Doing? This is so cool. Um, first off, I want to say thank you for taking all of my money, everything that you guys have talked about on your podcast. I've literally bought no, thank Viore, you. <laughs> NCI, Elementi. Thank you. But honestly, I trust you guys because uh, you haven't you haven't failed me at all in all those purchases. Awesome. Um, I also want to say that I've been uh, listening since 2016, so I've seen the evolution of Oh shit, Doug, it's my favorite time of the week. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw that away. Okay, last one, last one. I've been practicing what I wanted to say here. Uh, I really love listening to Katrina and Sal's families. I'm Palestinian and my husband's Caucasian. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff that we're dealing with. Like if my mom offers you food, you eat it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> they don't get it. They don't get it. They don't get it. They don't get it, but that's okay. Okay, so... I apologize in advance. This is such an annoying question, but I have to ask it. I've been lifting for 10 years. Before that, I was a gymnast for 14 years. I love my body and I truly believe strong is beautiful, but I have the opposite problem and that I want to cut back on the amount of muscle I have in my upper body, specifically my upper traps and my neck. I'm not sure if it's a lack of recruiting of the correct muscles in my lifts, my gymnastics history, the fact that I have a lot of tension in my neck and shoulders with my baby, or that I'm just super blessed with killer upper trap genetics. <laughs> I don't know about my body fat percentage, but I know when I weighed my lowest um, at my wedding, I was still super self-conscious about my upper body and how it looked. I understand lifting heavy doesn't make you bulky, but I'm wondering if there is a little bit of truth to that for someone who loves to lift heavy. I don't know if I should like back off and do Pilates. Please tell me no. I don't like that. Um, and uh or if it's just super weak i remember there was an episode you guys were talking about maybe i need to do more um maybe shrugs or upper row upper upright rows or something and then uh, my second add-on question is i purchased the uh, mind pump fitness coaching academy and i love it i'm curious for someone who wants to get better at like form and watching like let's say someone's doing a pull-up um how like watching them recruit their scapula and then like how it travels up the kinetic chain, just like little things. Like how do I become better at catching those things? Mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. Really good, uh, yeah, that's a good yeah. question. And um, for someone who has a lot of injuries myself, mainly from CrossFit, um, I know that I hold on to a lot of tension. So like if I'm going into lifts, I can tell that I'm like, Oh, my back's going to hurt in a deadlift. 
And sure enough, I make it hurt. So um, kind of what can I do for myself and what can I do for my clients? So those are all my questions. Thank you. Great <laughs> questions. Yeah. Yep. So, okay. So you did gymnastics for 14 years. Uh, yeah. how, did you get pretty competitive? Compared to some of your listeners, no. <laughs> well, what do you, okay. But, what do you, but pretty competitive. Yeah. And how many days a week at your peak were you training? Uh, five days a week. Yeah. Okay. So you, you probably have really good muscle building genetics on top of the fact that you did a lot of strength training type stuff for years and years and years. The development in the parts that you, that you kind of want to reduce really is just going to be about trading volume. So when you're doing your workouts, I would take volume away from the areas that you want to be less developed and you could either just keep the volume off or place on other areas that you want to develop. And that's totally fine with someone at your level. Someone at your, I would never do this with a beginner or intermediate because we would create imbalances. We would not create an imbalance with someone like you if you did one set for, you know, the areas that, you know, for a whole week, if you just did one set, that would be enough to maintain strength and not produce any imbalances, for example, just because of your, your background. Um, the last part of the question that you said was, you know, I know I'm going to hurt myself. What can I do? If you tend to be tense and you go into a workout tense and that's what causes uh, injury, I actually learned this from one of my trainers. When I used to go into workouts, I would always psych myself up. Um, and this trainer that I had working with me taught me that sometimes it was a good idea to bring myself down. And so what I did, and I, I did this with clients as well, people like you, is we would do five minutes of belly breathing, yeah, breathing. before we go into our lifts. Uh, and, and that just induces this parasympathetic, uh, parasympathetic state in the body. So if you're not familiar with belly breathing, it's filling up the diaphragm fully. If you are, okay. So I would do like five minutes of that before you go into your workout. And that'll, that should help with those recruitment pattern uh, issues that you're, you're noticing. Um, and then technique and form and intricacies with that. The most I ever learned was be, by working with a physical therapist, uh, you know, kind of hand in hand. When I had physical therapists, you know, when it comes to like strength building, muscle building, they're not the best. But when it comes to like like recruitment patterns and understanding um, how the body moves and how you you know noticing the smallest differences in, or, or in, in technique and they're like the best they're the absolute best. So if you can mentor with a physical therapist or with a really good correctional exercise specialist, mm -hmm. that'd be the best thing. Second best would be to do like a correctional exercise specialist certification. Um, NESM has a really good one. And then through that course, you should be able to learn, you know, pick up more on nuances with technique. I haven't stopped thinking about that question of all your questions. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think already about some things that we can do. I go to like FRC in that course to help you guys with that. Um, you know, what comes to mind is like maybe going like having a series where we take like, for example, like pull up is the, yeah. the exercise of the week. And we talk about all the common mistakes and, and challenges for people and some of the cues and techniques to improve that. Uh, maybe something like that. I don't know. I'll keep, I'll tell you what, I'll keep working on how we can do that for you guys in court. This, this is part of our goal yeah. is to allow you guys to continue to, obviously we wanted to over deliver on the value of it right out the gates. But then the idea of is that it's this, this, it's ongoing and evolving and improving and getting feedback like that is incredible for us. So I appreciate that. The other thing I want to touch on is uh, more on what Sal said about, you know, if I had a client like you that is like, Adam, I'm cool with my shoulders and my back. I don't really, you know, upper back. I don't want to develop that anymore. Totally could carve that out of the training program. And then where, where I insert the volume, because typically everybody has something, either one, another muscle somewhere else that they want to develop more. And so it could be something there. Also, people always tend to have some sort of imbalance or mobility yeah. stuff that they should be doing more of. And so so I start inserting it there. So it's like, oh, the program calls for, you know, upper back stuff. Like, let's get that out. We're going to do your lizard with rotation here for mobility. Or oh, So you, I love to take, the, follow the programming that's laid out when it's in a muscle group that you know you can lay off of. Then you go and you do that. Um in the docu series, I talk about this with my arms. So as a kid, so I wasn't a gymnast. I was a uh, insecure boy about his arms, and so I trained arms five days a week for probably eight years. And so uh, now I literally touch them once in a while, and I get it right back. So you have the same thing there. So what's great about that 
is that it, it needs very little attention to get to where you want it to be or develop it. So you can completely kind of leave it alone and go other places. And to Sal's point, we would never do that with somebody early on in their programming because we wouldn't want to cause an imbalance. But you've already overdeveloped in that area for so long that letting go of it and doing other stuff is totally fine and okay, and you'll and you'll be okay. And then just occasionally, every once in a while, vi revisit it and, it. and and hit it. And don't I'm like literally, I mean like you can you, literally do one set a week for those areas, yeah. or one set every other week, and you'd be fine. Yes, yes. You know, you know, with one other thing with the noticing nuances with technique, uh, something else you could do too is you could film somebody's form. And one easy way to notice uh, differences in technique is to look for asymmetries. So when you're watching someone move, you know, make sure you film it perfectly head on or whatever. And then when you watch the video, m see if either side matches perfectly. And then you'll start to notice things. You'll start to notice things that you maybe didn't notice when you were watching them do the set. And you can say, okay, you're engaging this side a, a second before the other side. Or I notice your left elbow straightens out just after the right one. Or I see your scapula here stays a little elevated on this particular press. But it's hard to see. It's easier to see when you film it sometimes. And you can just look at it. And I, there were a couple times where I had clients where I'd like film them and study the film to notice the difference to kind of help me. Um, and that was one thing that I found that, that could be helpful. Yeah. And if you haven't heard of like FMS, like they do a screening, um, and it's probably one of the better, uh, overall broad stroke of all the different forms of like how to kind of assess people in all these different, uh, body positions and you know, how they're firing sequence. Like you can notice these little, uh, nuanced changes. Uh, and so just being real versed in that, uh, helps that that's one of those it's it's pretty comprehensive but for somebody like you that's like very like this is this is a focal point like i want to get better at this and i want to learn so you can you can kind of like obviously your your clients or whoever you're working with like a lot of times i don't use a lot of those techniques but i me being aware of them helps me to spot that more appropriately if, if even if they're doing a squat or if they're doing a pull-up or they're doing whatever it is they're doing you'll be able to notice those uh nuances a lot more. i love that justin yeah. in fact F FMS is incredible. Yeah, that's, In fact, that's a great idea for the coaching problem is to take that information, distill it down to some of the big rocks for them. I have an idea. Around yeah, that. I know. And well, you're, you're getting our wheels spinning. I'm, I'm right there with you. So we'll, we'll, we'll be working on. Yeah. Stuff. Because you have the course, uh, and this is for anybody watching as well. When you get our course, we're always going to add new content forever. So you'll always get the new stuff. You'll never have to pay another dollar and whatever we add, you're going to have access to. So you just gave us some great ideas. Hey, come on. Love it. Do you I'm have to ask if there was a, a YouTube video or something that you guys have made on certain moves that I should start watching? I mean, if or, you, if, do you, or, do you, do you, it's coming. Do you use, do you use the uh, Mind Pump TV YouTube channel much? Because that's a lot of exercise cues. Yeah, we've done a ton. I, I, need, I need to watch it. Yeah, yeah. For, for example, yeah. you brought up pull up, and there's a video I've done on uh, lat pull downs and pull ups where one of the best cues I ever learned yeah. was teaching people to pull their chest up to the bar instead of pulling down. And that's what a lot of people pull mm -hmm. like this. Yeah. And then their Those shoulders roll forward. And so teaching the mm -hmm. cue of lift the chest up yeah. to the bar. And that that channel is full of that. That's mm -hmm. full of exercises where we give common uh, challenges with clients and then how to cue them. So that should be really valuable to you if you haven't gone through that. So if I have issues with my confidence, I guess, I've been a trainer for 12 years. If, they're, if it's not hurting them and it looks good from what I'm seeing, are they like, should I not be too concerned? Yeah. Like if they're like, oh, my body feels great. Then I'm just like, okay. If the technique looks good and they feel okay. And they feel it where they're supposed to. You're good. Yeah, if yeah. they feel it. The, the, the thing that would make me question that is if they're doing an exercise and they're telling you they feel it somewhere where we're not working. Right. Okay, that's another one. Like I had someone today doing a hyperextension and uh, I was trying to get her to work on her glutes. So like really rounding. And I was like, oh, I try to think of a good cue. And then she's like, oh, I feel it in my abs and i was like okay so like that like examples like that where i was like i don't really know where to go or she'll be like only only my left side is firing yeah switch to an easier exercise yeah, yeah that's it. so and yeah. okay so this is a good example how i want you to also use our coaching forum like that would be a great question to pose for the community Hey, I have a client. I was doing hyperextensions. When I tell she her to do it, it on one she side only fills it in one side or her core. What are some techniques you guys have found work really good with yeah. getting clients to fill it in their glutes? Yeah, and then, because I already have some that come to mind, right? That I would want to be able to write and explain. And yeah. so, 
yeah, that's a great way to use that community is when you run into stuff like that, uh, that way we can all learn together. For sure. I mean, with that client, I would have regressed her. I would have put her on a on a body weight hip thrust and really got her to feel her glutes. Mm -hmm. Then we would have tried again if she still doesn't feel yeah. it. Shorten the range of motion if she still doesn't feel Isometric it. Isometric. Not the right is. exercise right yeah. now. Yeah, there's also a way to do those on the hyperextensions to where you draw into the core and you actually lift That's from what the she's glutes. To do. Yeah, what's happening? She's hyperextending with her yep. low back and she's not engaging the glutes. That's right. And there's a way you suck in to actually pull up. Yeah. So I actually have cues for that to help people, but it is a little more advanced. Yep. Uh, and so I, I still would regress it first, but there's also cues to help that. Yep. So yep. I mean, this, this is a great example of how to use this community right here. Is like that's a great question yeah. and uh, and is took me a long time to get that. Any one. of our programs that you don't have that you'd like? I'd love to send you something. I wrote all of them down. I have anabolic performance, starter, prime, aesthetics, uh, maps, sorry, prime, pro, strong, split, hit, anywhere. Muscle, I don't know what's left. Muscle mommy. Power lift? Muscle mommy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you want that or power lift? Which one? Let's see what muscle mommy is. You got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll send yeah, that mm -hmm. to you. You know what? Thank you're you so a much. you're a trainer in our course. I'll give you both. You get muscle oh, mommy and power lift. Yeah. yeah. Boom. Yeah. There you go. Sorry, everybody. Okay. We, we favor. Training. I'm giving you all my money. That's the least you can yeah. do. Just yeah, yeah. No, that is, with that. That is, yeah. That's the least we can <laughs> that's, do. You're that's right. Totally You're fine. right. We got you. I do have to end with one thing. This is not me. I promise. This is my husband. But please answer this. Do Mary kill Hitler, Mussolini, Stalin? Please answer this. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to answer that. What a terrible question. <laughs> okay, then I'm good. Thank you so much. We can't win. Mussolini, Hitler, and Stalin? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Not me. It wasn't me. Yeah, tell him the we worst You have to end it with that. Yes, yes. Yeah, tell your husband right. that was a great well, question. Thank you. All right. I thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Wait, I'm confused. Was it fuck? Yeah, yeah, she that's... said do. Yeah, she She's said do. Language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, she picked the three <laughs> worst <laughs> people ever. <laughs> That's too much. Oh, That's too, wow. That's too much. Right. The, too much thinking for that yeah. one. Too. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yes. great, great. It's really good question. Yeah, but development. It's like once you've reached a certain level of training, uh, like like you, you just don't even need to train. Well, you you hit the the most important part though. I think about that because there's going to be people who hear that that are don't like certain parts of their body. Nah, not and, the same. Yep. Yeah, and you know, like they're just getting started on their journey, and they're like, I hate my big arms, yeah, so yeah. I don't want to do arms. No, like, no, no, no. no, no, no. No, no, no. We got to strengthen them. Yes. And so uh, that is an example, though, a gymnast who has been pulling her body weight up and dipping on bar. I mean, mm. she's got she's foundational strength. Very much so. Big she's yeah. beyond that. She's, yeah, even beyond, yeah. she's got a lot of strength in that area. And so we could totally. And this is something that I, memory, I, like, yeah. I, my point of like the arms thing, like I'll I'll just I won't do them for weeks. Yeah. I won't even touch yeah. them because I did. I overdid yeah. them. And for that's so many that, I mean, they are getting yeah, some work anyway with back and chest. Right. And yeah, that's right. So somebody who's advanced been training for a long time. Yeah. Totally OK to do that. And then I normally just insert things that I should be doing right there. Our next caller is Ben from Idaho. What's up, Ben? What's going on, Ben? What's happening, dude? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, Good, man. So, I don't know if you remember a couple of little, maybe a year or so ago, you sent out a challenge for some oatmeal cookies with the Creatures of Habit. Okay. And so, I, I sent you some of those cookies. Oh, I remember that. I do remember uh, that. That's, 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 that's funny because so, uh, Adam didn't share a single one with us. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I remember strange. them. Strange. <laughs> that's weird. They were good. Well, we did protein cookies. My next idea is freeze-dried ice cream with creatine. We'll see how that goes. Oh, jeez. I like that. I like that. <laughs> how can we help you? Yeah, what's but, up, buddy? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, express my gratitude real quick. Uh, um, you guys uh, talked about if you're reaching non-fitness people. I'm about as far from a fitness person as you can imagine. And because of your podcast, uh, you know, now I strength train, my wife strength trains, my brother-in-law's uh, all strength train, and we're having our own little power competition at the end of powerlifting competition at the end of the year. And so you, you've reached a, a huge number of people in my little corner. So I just want to say thank you for that that's great that, man. that's awesome that's bro. thank you we love to hear that man thank you perfect so when i wrote my question my challenge was i'd been on semaglutide for about six months and saw absolutely zero weight loss i started at 275 stayed at 275 i'm six foot tall um i was my fitbit scale i know they're not great but it was saying 38 percent body fat and i just wasn't moving and it was really really frustrating because you hear all these stories like oh mm. take the drug it works and it's, before I even started the medication, I, I'd followed your advice. I'd been strength training for a solid year before even starting the medication. And it just wasn't moving in, in a, a healthier direction. Um, since I sent in my question, I had switched from semaglutide to terzepatide, so ozempic to manjaro. Um, and I, that has been better. But so my, my, my big question here is, 
uh, what do you do when they don't work? And what do you do when they stop working? Because uh, I don't think we're long until the terzepatide isn't really doing what we need it to do either. You do all the stuff that we talk about on the show that has I nothing do. to do with GLP-1s. Yeah. It's all the same stuff. It's, it's you know, hit your protein first, hit your protein first, eat only whole natural foods, avoid uh, heavily processed foods. In some cases, track, find your maintenance, cut from there, strength train. It's all the same advice, let's, whether you're on a GLP-1 or not. Let's talk about what we're learning ourselves with this. We're, we're taking 50-something people right now through GLP-1s and, uh, you know, learning uh, as we go through this process what we're, you know, trends that we're seeing. There's some people, like you're describing, that have incredible results and they lose weight every single week consistently like crazy. Other people, absolutely nothing. Some people crush it up tight. So there's a wide range of people uh, that respond really well. And what we have found or what we've no what we're noticing right now is people that tend to be healthier metabolically going into it team seem to see the best results. So if you were somebody who was like a chronic, you know, yo-yo dieter or super low calories, you got a, a slow metabolism, and then you hop on this GLP one and you were already eating really low calories, it's maybe a little bit lower, but not a big difference, and you don't see the the needle move whatsoever. And so, and again, like Sal said, our advice would be the same advice to that person, which is you need to hit your protein intake. We probably need a reverse diet. We probably need to really focus on building muscle, getting strong to get you in a metabolically uh, healthy place for us to then cut and reduce calories. Have, have you tracked your calories to see where they're at? Yeah. So I, I'm really great about hitting protein. When you talk about how hard it is to hit protein, I don't seem to have that challenge. I okay. get to 200 and I track that. I weigh it out. Um, my calories live between 2,000 and 2,500 most days. Um, I track my steps. I get eight to 10,000 steps. I have gotten stronger. When I first started with you guys two, two years ago, I was doing like 25, 30 pound dumbbell bench press. I can do 75 pound dumbbell bench press now. Nice. So I have gotten stronger. Um, so I, like I said, I, I, I hear all these big rocks and I'm like, yep, check, check, check. I feel like I'm checking your all those boxes and I'm still feel Dan, stubbornly stuck. So you, you could cut your calories, but then you'd end up at like 1500 calories. Yeah. You're, so we're going to have, we'd have to reverse diet. You, yeah. yeah. We'd have to get your calories up to a higher place yeah, before bump, we could yeah. cut. You're, Even if you go on a GLP one, right? Let's say you go on cause trizepatide is a, what is it? A double agonist, uh, GLP one agonist. I think agonist. Yeah. Some, some aglutide was single. I know there's another one coming out. Yeah, I can't pronounce sure. the name. It says you're a pharmacist. You probably know the name. I Start can. It's uh, Retratrutide. Re re it's Retratrutide. Retratrutide, okay. Yeah. Retratrutide. Yeah, yeah. Th th there's that triple Mouthful. agonist. Probably going to be even more effective. But what they're going to do is make you eat less. Where are you going to go? You're at 2,000 now at 275, six foot. That's a, that's a really low range, by the way. Yeah, it's going to bring you down to 1,200 calories, 1,000. And then you'll plateau anyway. You're going to lose 20 pounds, you'll plateau. A guy your size, I would like to see you in the mid three thousand minimum. Yes. So I would I would do a reverse diet if I were and do it slow if you're afraid of, of lots of weight gain. Just a nice slow. Give yourself like six months of reverse dieting. Let's let's see if we can get you up to thirty five hundred four thousand calories without really gaining much on the scale. A few pounds, not a big deal, but without really gaining much. Then when then when once we're there and your maintenance now is thirty eight hundred calories, well now we can do a cut. But your calories are so low right now, even if you went on a, 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 a GLP-1 that worked and killed your appetite, like where are you going to go from there? Yeah, you're going to go down to 1,200 calories? And you're not going to see it, – it's going to be a real slow move, move the needle. Here's, yeah. a, here's a really positive thing about where you're, you're at. Um, the fact that you're strength training obviously is a huge, a huge plus. And the fact that you tell me that hitting your protein intake is easy and not hard for you because those are going to be like two of the biggest things. Bump your protein for this Con reverse diet. Constantly yeah. being consistent with hitting your protein – while simultaneously strength training to build muscle, if you slowly increase those calories, and I mean like as, as long as you don't go overboard, like eating thousands of calories too much, most of that's going to get partitioned over to building muscle. Yeah. And you're going to build a, a more muscular physique with a faster metabolism. And a, a, our goal right now currently should be let's try and gain as little weight as possible. If we gain a little bit, not a big deal, but gain as little as possible on the scale while getting stronger and getting your calories up to about 3,500 calories. Yeah. That is a massive win for us. Even if you don't even drop a single pound, you even increase by five pounds on the scale. But I get you up to 3,000, 3,500 calories and stronger in the gym. We're really yeah. kicking now ass. Now we can cut. Yes. Now we can cut. 
Uh, ben, uh, are, so you're eating 200 grams of protein a day consistently, right? Yes, that's correct. All right, here's your first step in reverse dieting. Add 50 grams of protein. So now okay. you're 200 calories above what you're eating, and you're going to get stronger. And then from there, you don't need to add more protein. If you do another bump, you can add carbs or fats. But you definitely need to reverse diet because we don't have a lot of room. For a guy your size, we don't have a lot of room. I don't even like to cut women uh, who are at 2,000 maintenance because it, it puts us in a bad situation. Here's what would happen. If I put you at 1,200 calories, you'd lose 20 pounds, and that's it. You'd be plateaued, and then we're screwed. Now I don't know what right. we're going to do now. You know, How's your deadlift and squat and bench? Give me those numbers. So um, I've been training more with uh, dumbbells than barbell lately because of my, my gym access. Okay. So – I can do 75 pound dumbbell bench press for, you know, six reps and, you know, three sets of six reps. That's good way. Okay. Um, I'll do, uh, you know, a 90 pound goblet squat and that's more limited by what I can hold in a dumbbell. Mm -hmm. Um, when I was doing a back squat, I was in the 205, 210 range. Yeah. Um, Bulgarians. my deadlift, uh, Bulgarians, I don't do very often. You know, so, ben, go, ben, go to those. That'll I got be good it. for you. I, good. Dude, you need to start, can you get access to barbell? You're a big guy, bro. Holding dumbbells that are going to be adequate for lower body and stuff are going to be hard. No, no. I, I have a barbell and plates at home. It's just I had to take down my home gym because we were doing construction. Okay. So I'm a, a week away from putting it all back. Uh, okay. Oh, good. Oh, bro. That, yeah, that's better. Get back to barbell training, reverse diet, get strong, get up to 3,500 calories minimum, and then from there we'll start the cut. Are you, Ben, are you in our private forum already? I'm not, no. Okay, I'm going to have Doug put you in that. And this is what I want for you. Because here's, I'm telling you right now, like you just bumping the, the protein like Sal said, which gives you a couple hundred extra calories. In a month's time, I think we're going to see already like a, a major increase in strength. And and if we can keep the scale around the same, I think we can hit this kind of Goldilocks zone of where we're slowly reverse dieting you, just adding a few you're hundred calories. And, getting leaner. and you're just kind of oh. building muscle, slightly getting leaner, oh, speeding yeah. up the metabolism. It's just this, this beautiful exchange. <laughs> uh, but it's slow and gradual, and I want you to use the forum for uh, for us to keep you on track because that the hardest part is the psychological part because you'll feel like, man, I'm I'm doing all the right things and it's not moving fast enough, and you probably just need us to remind you, like, no, 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 bro, you're you're kicking ass right now. The yeah. fact that you've increased calories, we're up to now 2,400 calories. You're not putting any body fat on. We've watched your squat go up another 20 pounds. Like, you are winning. Like, those are the things that we're looking at right now that we care the most about. Don't worry, the 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 fat shredding and the weight thing that's going to come. It'll actually come through the whole process too, but it's not going to come fast. It's going to come slow and gradual until we get you up to like 3,500 calories. Then I can show you rapid fat loss but we got to get there first before i show you that stuff no that sounds great um the only question i would ask uh how, how would so for training we we had a baby a month ago so uh -huh. uh, that 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 adds some complication Mass, i was Mass yeah, 15. 15. yeah i've got that okay. so yeah, that's yep. the one bro yeah mass 15 do the advanced version advanced, that's perfect so you get the congratulations by the way is your first kid it is our first, yeah. So oh, right on. I, I I really appreciate when you all talk about being dads. It's like, oh well, they've done it, and so maybe maybe I can do it. Too. Hey, so really those, those those assholes figured it out. Maybe I should be able to figure <laughs> it out. Those idiots can do it. <laughs> You're not dead no, yet. I, I, well, your your stories are great, and it's like I, I'm 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 taking down copious notes of everything you're doing. It's like, oh, I'm just waiting for Maps Kids to come out. So, yeah. hey, <laughs> God coming, bless you, coming. man. Good, Work on good that. for you, dude. Good for right. you. Right on, Ben. Well, Thank we'll you. see We'll see you inside the forum. Uh, make sure you tag us and just kind of update us every three to four weeks, all right? That sounds fantastic. Thank you so much, John. All right, Ben. You got it, man. Take it easy, man. You know, I got to say, the people, with, the people whose metabolisms are slow but they're overweight are going to really – be disappointed by a GLP yeah, one because yeah. it's, it's going to be very underwhelming. Maybe it'll make them eat less, right? But where do you go? You don't where do you go? You have so your calories There's are no already room. low. You're overweight. Then what do you do? Eat less? Yeah. Now you're going to plateau, lose muscle, slow your metabolism down even more. Yeah. 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 You know, like I said, th there's we definitely have an obesity issue. But this underlying issue that nobody's talking about that yeah. is, is under just muscled. we're under muscled. So a guy that's 275, six foot who lifts weights should be able to eat 3,500 calories without gaining weight easily. So yeah. I'm I'm convinced. I mean, I, obviously, the verdict's not completely out. We, we're still in the middle of coaching and teaching all these people. But I think the best candidates for GLP-1 are people that are really overweight and really struggle with like binge eating and overeating yeah. snacks and candies that have a lot of a lot yeah. of bad habits can around I, that. Can yes. I say something right now? Yeah. I think if you're going to use a GLP-1 and you want it to really work, you want to maximize the effects, what you do 
is you do a good 60, 60 to 90 days of reverse diet, then go on the GLP-1. Watch what happens. Yeah. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body.